Hey everyone, uh, welcome back. Uh, this is, I'll be quiet for a little bit, but this is uh, the first session of Stranded. Uh, we uh, played our session zero two weeks ago. Uh, you saw us uh, crash down, but we're actually going to jump into the meat of it. Uh, and with this one, I'm not DMing, so I'm actually going to be one of the, the players here. So I'm going to turn, oh, actually one thing I'll add before turning it over to Keith, uh, join us tomorrow as well. Um, we've got our game of the month with uh, the Lancer series. We've got a couple of our players on here jumping on board with that. Uh, so if you want to get some uh, Mech Warrior type goodness, uh, come check us out. We're going to be giving away a copy of the PDF of the system too. Uh, and just from like reading it and like doing some of the, the dives in, it seems like it'll be a blast. So I'm hoping it plays fun, uh, but definitely join us. Come check us out there. But yeah, I'm going to be quiet now and turn it over to Keith. All right. Well, welcome to session one of Stranded. And so we do have one additional player. Uh, he wasn't able to make it for session zero. So uh, before we begin, I'm going to give him an opportunity to hand it over. Uh, Berger, if you want to explain, uh, talk about your character a little bit. Yes. Right on, the, right on the hot seat there. Uh, so what what exact details should I give off? Credit card information, social security number. And a mother's maiden name. Yes. Ah, uh, just on you. Still none. Ah, uh, just on. Uh, so reclaimer. Uh, what uh, what details should I give on him? Appearance, class, personality. Whatever you want. So we did a little bit of um intro, and I'll give everyone else an opportunity to if they want to expand a little bit. Uh, but maybe just talk about uh, what is Reclaimer, uh, maybe what does he look like, and if you want to give a little bit of it of his background, uh, you're more than welcome. It would be, you know, what does the other people on the ship know about you? All right, then. So Reclaimer is a class two droid, and he is a bit beat up, a bit battered, uh, but definitely not in disrepair, uh, seemingly kind of put together with whatever he can find but still looking generally like a uh, class two droid. There's some media details that would stand out from him though, from any other droid. First of all, he wears clothes. He, he puts on different articles of clothing. Uh, every day he wears something different. He, use, he has a, he actually quite likes furs. Uh, and he has a, what he calls a quote unquote face. He has the skull that he's kind of integrated into his own armor with one of his eyes coming out of it, uh, one of those little lenses. And he, and he even has the lower jawbone like tied and hanging from it. Uh, and that, I imagine that is kind of, a, kind of something that stands out to a lot of people. Uh, he, he's a bit eccentric, uh, he's kind of, a bit all over the place sometimes. Uh, on the ship, he, he seems to really want to, uh, people to have an interest in the old days, the old times, the old Republic, and what came before, uh, probably to varying degrees of failure. Um, and he would never be, he would never be too far from uh, his buddy, uh, Revelation, uh, who is a class three droid who looks much more terrifying uh, and is covered in a lot more furs uh, than Re uh, than Reclaimer. Uh, he will constantly say, like, hey, if our names are too hard to remember of Reclamation and Revelation, just call us R&R. &R. Uh, <laughs> uh, and um, he, uh, he claims to be trying to push a, uh, the reclamation initiative, whatever that is. Uh, and yeah, uh, he is mainly just a bit of a, uh, a repairman on the ship, bit of a mechanic, uh, working here and there, doing odd jobs. Sometimes you can find him in the kitchens, dishing out food. Other times cleaning. Sometimes doing calculations. A lot of the time fixing things that that uh, start to start to break. Uh, and that is uh, Reclaimer. All right. Nice. Well, welcome. And uh, I guess I'm going to give an opportunity. I know everyone kind of introduced their characters, but if anyone kind of refined it or changed it a little bit, uh, you're more than welcome to kind of jump in and, and just talk about those changes or expand if you want, or we can just move on. I just want to give everyone a shot. 
Well, looks good for you. Uh, Burger, did you see the last episode with what everybody looks like? Kind of what our characters are? Uh, I had the last episode playing on two times speed as I uh, <laughs> as I was running through everything. I, had everything. I saw um, like the first. So I I got about an, a quote unquote hour in. Uh, okay. Well, yeah. If if you want, we could just go through everyone too, real quick too. I, I don't, I'm fine with either. Uh, why don't we do just give everyone a refresher right. anyway? So. Yeah. All right. So I guess, uh, Ed Kimmel, if you want to jump in and, and go first. Sure. Uh, I'll be playing as Orgus Cordra, or as he is um, unfortunately affectionately known as Gus, a Arcanian doctor with a brilliant scatterbrained mind. He thinks very highly of himself, and he doesn't care if anybody knows it. He is a doctor, first and foremost. His patients are his highest priority, next to his ego. And he treats every patient as a chance to learn something new, whether they like it or not. He is, uh, if he was any less uh, useful in the operating room or in the med bay, he probably wouldn't have been aboard the Genesis. He grates here and there, but obviously he's worth keeping around. All right. Well, we're going to mix up the order because we're actually going to shoot over to Tegan next, so it'll make a little more sense to everyone. Yeah. Uh, so I was going to add in there because like, he's often flanked by a large bearable. Uh, so bearables are big lizards. Uh, and this guy is uh, no exception. Uh, no uh, exception. Well, that's hard to say. Uh, you see Tavok. Uh, he's a about six foot six lizard. So he's got kind of the scales on him. Uh, but he looks like he's a little bit worse for the wear. He's had a tough time of it. You see kind of the right side of him. Uh, his face has some cybernetic implants. Uh, his arm is completely cybernetics uh, and is prone to falling off in tense situations. Uh, <laughs> And the reason he's following Orgus uh, is Orgus was able, uh, the amazing doc that patched him up uh, after a mission against a, a Dino, Dino Win, and that's what I'm going to pronounce it, Dino Win, uh, one of the dragon-like creatures in this world, uh, went wrong, and he got like burnt up uh, worse than Vader. So uh, Orgus put him together, and uh, Tavik has sworn a life debt to him and kind of dutifully follows him around, even if he doesn't uh, doesn't care for the guy as much. And I'm pretty sure he's probably the one that got everybody to call him Gus versus Orgus. <laughs> well, the, uh, the burned lizard man was an excellent opportunity to learn. So he's grateful for that, at least. Uh, outside, of that, he's got uh, kind of pale gray skin or scales i should say uh he's got a big frame and just a wicked looking um metal or cybernetic arm uh and ridiculous claws on the arm nice cool. all right uh casper why don't you go ahead and jump in next so caspar is oh, a sorry. copyright uh, pending copyright pending um <laughs> And, and completely unaffiliated with any existing Caspar, legally distinct Caspar. Caspar has blue hair and is dressed in a very fancy refinery. He wears like blue clothes and like shiny, silky blue clothes and vests and things. So a little bit like you would imagine, uh, I, want, I want to also want to, almost want to imagine like a Neil deGrasse Tyson kind of outfit. So like stars everywhere. It's just ridiculous. Um, and he, as a character, is just very charismatic, very, I'm going to say something stupid in this moment, and you're going to like it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, he's a, He is a level three scout Deadeye mechanically, so I will be the team's sniper, and I've got some fun perks that make it difficult for my enemies to move if they do that. So I really hope they provoke that. Hashtag please DM. <laughs> Make my enemies move so that I can shoot them more. Right. Mm -hmm. Passing it on. Yeah, uh, fours. I think you're up. Cool. Okay, hey, I'm uh, playing. Uh, it's actually four Zundro, but he goes by fours. He's a seven foot tall Besselisk. Um, big beefy stocky guy. Um, he, I'm playing him like the Boy Scout turned military, so uh, he's definitely 
you think he might have almost all the gear you need for the campaign because he's carrying a ton of stuff. Um, uh, he's definitely going to be like wanting to help everybody. He's going to be that boy scout, that annoying boy scout, the big beefy meathead that wants to help. That's Thor's. So that's it. All right, keeping everyone else alive. I like it. <laughs> Um, and so from there, I'll just go through a quick recap. Uh, I wrote up a session note here, and I'll just read it um, to kind of know how we got to where we're at. Um, so the Genesis, the ship you are all on, uh, crash lands on the planet. However, the entire crew survives. While initially cautious, Captain Thane, uh, the captain of the Genesis, quickly relaxes and allows exploration. The Genesis is unlikely to ever fly again without massive repairs. It looks like the crew will be here for a while. Adol Citra, who is uh, the mayor of uh, one of the cities, uh, wastes no time in leading his followers into the wild, where they find a very habitable and welcoming planet. They quickly establish the town of Elmberg, a hasty collection of prefab buildings of uh, whatever material they can find in the wild. Chief Engineer Zazi Mir, on the other hand, starts immediately looking for ways to repair the Genesis. He's able to find a mine with valuable metals, and he's fairly confident, given time, he could get them flying again. The town of Dyerhurst sprouts up, quickly establishing mining op operations at the site. Um, sorry, my dog here. Three months pass. The weather goes from spring to summer, and spirits are high among the crew. And so that is where we're going to pick up. Um, I do want to, sh uh, I'll just show this on uh, roll 20 real quick. You should see that pop up. So you should all have access to this. You're welcome to kind of go through this and look. Um, it'll talk about the, um, the <clears throat> kind of what you know about the world, uh, the habitat, the oceans, uh, some a little blurb about the three cities. Um, or I call them cities, the Genesis, uh, which is where most of the crew still lives. Uh, Dyerhurst and Elmberg, the two cities, and also some of the NPCs so uh, that you'll meet along the way. Captain Devin Thane, um, Security Officer Chikali Alovi, which we were introduced to in Session Zero, uh, Chief Engineer uh, Zazimir, and Adol Citra, uh, who is the, the leader of kind of the refugee group and became, uh, was essentially elected mayor of Elmberg. Um, and then uh, Sil Zo, who's an advisor to Captain Thane. Um, his, uh, he doesn't necessarily have a title, uh, but kind of highly regarded by the captain. All right, and so you're welcome to kind of look through that at your own, a um, little bit more background, et cetera, about, uh, about the world. And, and so you can kind of see on here, I also put a world map, I'll show that real quick too. Um, you can uh, you might not be able to zoom in on this, but I can get you the file too, uh, so you can see it a little better. But basically, you'll be starting right up in here, and uh, think of maybe like uh, the I guess the West, uh, not not like California, but more like Oklahoma, uh, Kansas, that type of environment, right? So a lot of plains, um, very moderate winters, warm summers. Um, big open areas. Um, so that's kind of the, the environment where uh, we're going to start out at. All right. And so a couple other notes. You've been here for three months now. And so you'll, you'll kind of know a little bit about it. Um, and so, sorry, my dog. What? Um, Captain Thane has asked the, uh, the crew you're essentially acting as security uh, for the, the refugees who are, I guess, maybe now colonists uh, on the planet, and also the crew that is doing the, the, the mining operations and maybe some exploration. And so you're kind of act, acting as um, what I call security, looking out for threats, exploring, uh, making sure there's nothing lurking out there that's going to cause problems uh, while they kind of undergo these repairs or, or set up maybe what they're going to have, uh, you know, future cities, etc. cetera. Uh, so there hasn't been any major incidents. You're working directly under security officer, um, a lobby. And one of the unique things about the planet that you would have noticed is there's no predators. There's no 
um, kind of apex predator or alpha predator on the planet you've run into, there really hasn't been any issues at all. People have kind of been able to walk around and explore um, relatively safely. I mean, it is still the wild. People have gotten lost. People might have, um, you know, been in danger for that, but not necessarily attacked by anything wolves or giant birds or anything like that. You might you might fear on a, a planet with a you know habitable ecosystem. Um, there are wildlife, though. You have found uh, creatures that you'd kind of almost like an ox or like a bull um, that kind of wander in, in uh, herds, but they're relatively docile unless they feel threatened. And so a lot of the a lot of the wildlife is like that, uh, where they're mostly herbivores um, or scavengers that mostly kind of keep to themselves. Um, now, the, the problem with that is since there hasn't been many threats, you really haven't been able to explore very far. Uh, there are speeders, um, but they've been prioritized for shipping between the Genesis and the cities, um, and you really haven't been clear to travel that far. So you haven't seen um, beyond maybe just a, a couple of miles or, or what you've been able to do and maybe just a short trip around uh, the surrounding area. Um, you actually have run into some instances that there is a human or humanoid species on the planet. Uh, they're very primitive. You found an abandoned camp actually one time uh, with stone tools, um, huts made out of um, mostly either uh, built into hills or um, built out of uh, wood that they've been able to find, lumber, etc. But all very, very crude, all very, very uh, primitive. And they've mostly kept their distance. You haven't actually seen any of these people, um, but they haven't bothered you at all. And so having said that, and, and a little bit of background, um, would the group have any kind of immediate questions for me that they would have kind of tried to figure out over the last three months. Does the um, does the group have a name for the primitive uh, humanoids they found? Um, you haven't run into any of them, so you don't know exactly what they look like. Um, but the you do know that uh, actually Zazi started calling them shellbots. Uh, you don't really know where that came from. He's kind of a goofy fella. So. <laughs> But you don't think it's a species that's known in the galaxy. Has the, has the farmers or anyone at this point realized any useful plants from the area that they can actually use for either medicine and or, mm -hmm. you know, food um, or, outside of what they're growing? Enough. <laughs> yeah, one thing that's actually very unique is the soil is extremely rich. Um, and, and so a little bit of a background about the refugees is they were planning to go to uh, Toydaria and actually set up um, a civilization there. Um, and so they brought what would be kind of prefab buildings, buildings that essentially kind of self erect themselves and uh, can establish very quickly. And they've used those um, to kind of build out their little cities. Um, but they've also brought uh, some type of like seeds and, and other things that they could use for growing and agriculture purposes. And they have found that it's taken very, very well to the soil. So they actually have started their crops. They're hoping their crop actually comes in very soon. Uh, so it'll be the, the first crop on the planet. We're approaching kind of midsummer. Um, and, and so, yeah, so one, they've, they've actually found that the, anything that they've put in the soil is just grown. Uh, the soil is just extremely nutrient rich. Um, the other thing that they have found is on the plains, there is this, and this is more recent, uh, there's this grass that grows that's extremely, uh, you know, has a high, high tensile strength, right? It's very strong. And they've, they've shown a way to weave it together to actually form structures out of it, almost like what you'd see. Think of kind of uh, if you were to have a, a house made out of like hay or something. Uh, but when they weave it together, it actually proves extremely resilient. And so some some of the settlers have actually started using that to, to form structures out of and expand on their uh, prefect buildings. Hmm. I imagine Tavik kind of spent most of his time just complaining uh, about the lack of like <laughs> huntable animals. Like he's probably like hunted. Like you said, there's bison, so he's probably hunted a few bison. Uh, but he's like, 
probably just the Gus, even though like he and Gus don't really get along. He's still complaining to Gus. Like, <laughs> this planet has nothing worth hunting. Every day, these bison. I snuck up on one. I literally cracked a branch to see if it would run, and I still caught it. it was just, just a poor excuse for the planet. Maybe you should try hunting, too. If I can catch one that easy, two wouldn't be that bad. If I can find those Shabbats, if they, maybe they'll try to start something. That, that, that could be a good hunt, right? I mean, I don't know if you'd want to eat a, a, a species that uses tools. Well, I mean, you don't have to eat them. Oh, so just to murder them for the sport of it? You don't have to, uh, they caused a threat. <laughs> <laughs> They're beating like, rocks together. I'll make it sporting. Like, I'll just use my claws. Ford's like, you shouldn't go looking for trouble. Sometimes you'll find it. And you might find something that's beefier than you. It doesn't just need a win. I highly doubt it. Well, don't jinx I us must, I, I must say, I have not taken the opportunity to hunt the elusive beast and alpha predator of man, but I should <laughs> like the opportunity. So, Falk, if you should find yourself out in the wilderness hunting man's most dangerous game, please allow me to assist. That's the spirit, but we'd, we'd only hunt them if they attack us, and then, then we'd hunt them down. But only if they attack Shh. Of course, of <laughs> course. I know the code word. It's, watch out, it's coming right for us. That's the spirit. <laughs> This got dark. <laughs> this is... Colonism! Right? <laughs> Boy, it sure is a nice planet you've got. It'd be a shame if you lost it. <laughs> well, regardless, I, now I, am, I think I understand why they've kept their distance from us if they're still around. Oh, well. It'd be funny if this was actually home of the space dragons. I would laugh. <laughs> All right. So, uh, so the group will start out by uh, it's kind of early morning. Uh, you'll get called into uh, Security Officer Jacalia Lopi's office uh, on the Genesis. Uh, uh, a human of kind of kind of average build. Um, uh, but kind of known for his quick wits. Um, he kind of always has one way of staying ahead of, of everyone else, and that's how he's kept the, the Genesis safe to this point. And, uh, so he calls you in, and he starts off by going, uh, yeah, w welcome, welcome, come on in, come on in, uh, have a seat. Uh, uh, you know, everything's been quiet, and uh, but I think I found us some work. And he goes, uh, Zazi, he's got a favor. Uh, he told me you guys would might be able to, to help out. And, and the good news is I got you a speeder. Uh, so you'll get to maybe get to go out and explore a little bit, get out of this place for uh, you haven't been able to do that in a while. Uh, he has some equipment he needs set up. Apparently, when we crashed, the, the nav sensors just went haywire. Uh, he's not been able to repair them. Uh, but he did, uh, you know, rig up a, a couple smaller devices that he thinks he can use to uh, triangulate or uh, ask him. Uh, he, he wants you to put him some places on some hills, uh, and he thinks that he can at least find out where we're at in uh, the universe or in the galaxy. Uh, so he gave some specific locations, and uh, so then at that point he would hand over kind of who's who would be kind of the leader of the this the group. Five I'll do it. Fours. Yeah, five <laughs> fours. Fours? All right. So he handed over to fours and he said, you know, and on it, it's a, it's a map of uh, two locations marked. Uh, and he goes, hey, fours, I, I know that uh, you can find your way around. You won't get the group uh, group lost. Um, and uh, so then he says, uh, you know, and so you quickly looking at the map, you tell that it's a, it's a definitely too far to walk, but speeder. It's really not that bad. It's a doable distance. Um, he goes, uh, place the relays. Um, you know, if you if you hurry, you probably get both done before dark, uh, and then go ahead and make it back. And he goes, and, and you know, Zazi's already taken a look at the speeder, and uh, he's done some maintenance. You should be you should be all done 
all set. Um, he goes, but uh, you guys do get delayed and you get hung up. Um, I'm sure you'll be all right staying overnight. Uh, um, but, you know, comms have been a little glitchy. You probably can't uh, reach back in. Um, but, you know, I'll just expect to see you tomorrow. Um, and I'm, I'm re really not seeing many issues. So he said, just go out and place those two relays. And then, uh, you know, Zazie would really appreciate it. Okay, two relays, back by dark, made by tomorrow morning. Got it. Done. Such optimism. I love it. Well, All if right. I'm involved, we're going to win. <laughs> and maybe there'll be something worth hunting a little bit further away. <laughs> Goodness, does your mind ever one track mine eh well hunting is a way of life my people if you're not hunting you're being hunted so might as well be hunting sound logic well yeah all right so do you guys have any questions for uh Chikali? he kind of wander around the back side of his desk and sit down and you can see he pulls up uh something and kind of starts starts writing away so then uh, I just want to make sure we place the sensors, any uh, commands we got to enter, just turn it on, done. That's how the sensors work. He goes, yeah, apparently they're, they're set up. Uh, there's some instructions on the, the side. I don't know, Zazie, he, he, he gets pretty specific about that. He, he, he said that uh, he provided um, some, some uh, instructions. Uh, so just set them up, hit the big button. Uh, it'll tell you what to do. So I look at the I'm looking at each member of the group. Which one of you guys are uh, techie? That might be me. me. <laughs> Alrighty. Um, uh, is it the uppercase R or lowercase R? Just want to make sure. You said R and R, if, so that's what I'm going by. If it is too difficult, he is R one. I am R two. Okay, so I <laughs> hand over the document. I'm like, read that and let me know if it works. Um, I've Thanks. Been on that joke since I came up with this character. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, uh, who's our mechanic in the group? Oh, that crap, would be again, me. Right? <laughs> the other are. Well, guess what? You're also going to look over this vehicle just to make sure it can get his back. <laughs> Everybody else, pack for the night. If you must know a pilot, that would also be me. <laughs> All purpose drug. Just, like, yeah. just like the bottom jaw, just wiggling a bit as he's turning his head back and forth to everyone. Okay. Um, any of you guys have any questions? Many, but not about the mission. Discuss those on the way. Everybody pack up. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> and like Force is all gung ho. He's like, yeah, and he goes to his room and he, he's like, <laughs> Everybody meet in two hours outside by the speeder. Let's go. High five. And all four hands are up for you guys. Crap. Uh, and we got a, we got a companion bot too. So I'll hit that one twice. Um, <laughs> yeah. His hands are claws. <laughs> Headbutt. Bam. David gives like a, a real hesitant high five. He, yes, this 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 will be exciting. I guess. <laughs> awesome. And goes to pack up uh, his gear. Love your enthusiasm. Mm, yes. Let's go. Slapping <laughs> meat hands together to show enthusiasm. <laughs> An excellent ritual. Right. Orgus will uh, kind of look at, uh, at, at four is a little puzzled, return the gesture with one of his own appendages, and just, well, I suppose it beats treating runny noses. Off we go. Yeah. Let's go. Right. Looks back at maybe you'll have another chance to put on some more cybernetics to an unlucky being. I know you enjoy that. Well, I mean, the challenge. How do I keep you alive? Oh, goodness gracious! It's well, been three days since my arm's fallen off. Maybe, maybe we'll beat a new record. <laughs> Speaking of which, if you have any enhancement ideas you'd like to try out, please let me know. I'd be very interested. Well, I mean, is that for uh, myself or 
No, no, me. I'm just wondering, like, if, if you find yourself needing to experiment with human body to see what you can make it do, I'd be interested. I might enjoy being a test subject. <laughs> a willing subject? Well, I've always wanted to be one of those people who, like, went out to say, you know, receive new pharmaceuticals from groups like, say, oh, I don't know, uh... Uh, the people who made Vicodin, I would love to have tested those drugs for them and reported back the the results of what I found. I Perhaps, you know, so there are many things that I might be interested in. Perhaps a new arm! Who knows the applications? Orgus is very shocked at the, at the whole, yes, please, experiment on me, I welcome it, attitude from... Anyway, well, I'd like to see your data before you got started. But oh, I, yes. well, you know, I'll, I'll put life is short. There. Have fun with it. <laughs> we'll make it much shorter. Anyway, <laughs> uh, <laughs> we will uh, run off hurriedly and excitedly at the prospects of a willing participant. Yeah, Tavich jaw is literally just like all the. <laughs> <laughs> Boris had already left and got his shit. He's waiting <laughs> <at> here. So... <laughs> yeah, Boris is like in the speeder being like, if you're not early, you're late. Exactly. <laughs> I'm, there. I'm, exactly there. I'm like, dude, come, let's go. Boris yeah. right. is going over in his head. So what about human anatomy again? How many bones do they have? Can we make it more? Can we make it less? <laughs> If we could lose one, it would be that guy. Wait, no. what would it be like if I had another section here? Oh, God. <laughs> okay. That's some vivid imagery. All right. All right, then. Um, <laughs> so uh, you'll notice that... Uh, so the two, two spots on the map are... Um, about one is about two hours away. Uh, one is about an hour away. It's significantly closer. Um, and then if you kind of think they're about two hours from each part, so one is kind of the northeast a little bit, and then the farther one is uh, to the northwest. Um, and, and so is in a speeder, it's about an hour or two hours, uh, but just kind of so reference uh, walking speed. Well, you can cover in a speeder, it takes two days. Or, or one hour in a speeder takes about two days. You're you know, going about 50 mile an hour if you want to keep it safe. Speed up, uh, you can get there faster, et cetera. Uh, slow down, it's a little safer. Um, but on average, about 50 mile an hour through the wild is about what a speeder so we're, we're, And I look down at our driver, which I'm assuming is the same guy that can fix it. It's like, we're going safe. Look over the, look over the speeder real quick, man. Yes, I shall do this. Look, uh, like takes a couple looks at the speeder goes up to it uh could i roll a mechanics to kiss to see if this thing's gonna break down immediately yeah go ahead and roll all right here mechanics these are integrated oh nice uh so 16. yeah so you you look over the speeder and uh yeah you can tell like this was personally serviced by Zazimir, and he is a very good mechanic, uh, extremely talented um, engineer. Um, and yeah, it, it looks like about as good of shape as it can get in. Um, and from a uh, kind of mechanic standpoint, what that means is the speeder has uh, one half unreliable. So it is a unreliable and we talked about that rule a little bit. It is unreliable, um, but it's a half. So eventually you're going to roll two dice uh, and you get to drop the lowest roll. That's what that means. Um, and so, yeah, he looked it over for you and he definitely kind of hooked you up. Uh, and it looks like it's in really good shape. Would there be any way to very quickly and, well, quickly um, fix this up so it has even a better chance? Um. Like, you know, it, that's about, so let me talk about the reliability rule a little bit. And we talked about this last week. So essentially there's going to be equipment in the world that's going to be um, unreliable, right? And that's to simulate that this, you know, this speeder 
like realistically the speeder's probably 250 years old right like that and so they've kind of salvaged out parts and kept it running and that's kind of how they've kept society going is they don't have the ability to largely create new stuff um and so you'll have a, a unreliable number and when you use it you'll have to roll that many d10 if you roll a one uh something bad will happen um, but if you don't roll a one you're fine uh, so that's kind of how the unreliable will work and so as that unreliable number goes up uh, you could have unreliable three four five there is no cap uh, then you'll have to roll that many d10s and something bad happens for every one you roll so unreliable one half is as good as a uh, unreliable thing will get. Um, All right. and, and so you'd kind of so back into the game. You look it over and you're like, yeah, Zazi, uh, you know, would have done a fantastic job. Uh, Reclaimer's going to turn around uh, to fours, uh, spark a little, and say, "This vehicle is as reliable as I am. It should work perfectly." Don't drive over 30. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Davik looks to Gus and goes, well, I may be freed from my life debt one way or another. <laughs> it gets into the vehicle. So is there enough room for all of Ford's gear? Because he <laughs> has brought the obscene amount. Like, I mean, I can carry twice as much, and he seems to be doing that. You see, like, an emergency shelter packed on the back of his uh, top of his backpack, like two ropes, two shovels. He's got <laughs> four arms, you know, he can use them twice. Um, it's all kinds of stuff. He brings it to gear and he's like, I'm good to go for a week. How about you guys? Yeah, so there's there's definitely I, like seating for six, but your gear takes up two spots. So you're a little crouched. Um, <laughs> yeah, you'll make it work. I, uh, okay. I, I brought a snack. Is that that okay? Chew on it slowly. It's got to last a week. <laughs> Save it <later. laughs> um, Or at yeah, least so, a day. Is there anything else anyone would want to do, though, before you guys uh, kind of head out? I think I'm good. Yep, good. Get comfortable, I guess. All right. So uh, where are you guys going to go first? There wasn't really an in instruction, so uh, you can really go to either either of the relays. I guess whichever one, one first. The, the, yeah, the far one first makes sense to me. The far one first. All right. At so, a well under 50 miles an hour, 30 <laughs> to keep the speeder going. All right. Well, you, you can go. It'll take you a little bit longer. It'll be about three hours instead of two. Uh, but you can certainly uh, kind of go uh, safer, slower speed. Yep. Or if you wanted to kind of go the normal pace, uh, there will be a little bit of a piloting check, uh, but it, it'll be fairly fairly easy. It's it's the open plains, so there isn't really anything to crash into, uh, unless you nat one, and then we'll find something. I hear a challenge. <laughs> I've used these powers abusively before. <laughs> Is it claim of the time to go slow or fast? Uh, I said slow before, dude. Slow. Yeah. <laughs> slow. Got to take it slow. Got to take it slow. Floor it. Um, I can't uh, get definitely roll it. Floor it. I, can, I can only give you the look. Yeah. <laughs> you could you could also drive a little recklessly, and you could actually turn that into about an hour and a half. So you know, whatever you want to do. Oh, I, let's... may I may I roll with one being slow, two being normal. Three being recklessly and four being a uh, ludicrous speed. <laughs> oh, let's do it. This is going to be good. Uh, no, normal, normal. Just, uh, I shall take it slow. Spark starts flying again. Yeah, so uh, you're driving across the, the plains and um, it's, it's fairly easy going. Fairly straightforward. Uh, go ahead and give me a piloting check. Twelve. All right. Yeah. So you you you're kind of a little distracted. Uh, maybe not on your top uh, 
maybe that's the best drive you ever done. But like I said, it's pretty open, so you can weave across all the lanes. It won't matter. Um, and, and you get there with no serious incidents. Um, uh, but go ahead and roll me 2d10. Um, and this is going to be the reliability check. All right. Um, nice. Right? And there you go. So actually, uh, Zazi did a great job. Um, it, it really performed really well. You were able to push it a little bit. Not a problem at all. Uh, so you kind of uh, arrived to the base of kind of a... It's not necessarily a mountain, but it's definitely like a nice ridge. Um, and unfortunately, you can't make the rest of the way up. Uh, so you're going to have to maybe scale it on foot just a little bit. Uh, you can definitely climb it with, with no concerns. You won't need any like climbing gear. Um, but it is definitely too steep for the speeder. And as like Forrest is about to reach for the grappling hook, and he's like, okay, we'll walk it. <laughs> Before yeah. we leave the speeder, organics oh. remember to hydrate, for your meat flesh requires it. Good reminder, man. Make sure you bring the keys with us so no one <laughs> takes our ride. Revelation, hold the keys. I never thought I'd be lectured on hydration by a droid, but thank you for the suggestion. Who better than one with hydraulics? Make sure everybody stretch. We're going uphill. Stretch. <laughs> <laughs> um, he is that guy. So just let you know. Okay. <laughs> Topical from the guest goes. Uh, you're taking water tips from a droid and stretching tips from fours. Where did you get your doctorate from again? <laughs> <laughs> Wherever it was, I didn't think it would lead me here. Oh. I'm sure life is exactly as you thought it would be. <laughs> I expected more air conditioning. Just a fan coming up from one of the claimers are slowly raising up to your face. <laughs> <laughs> well, I suppose we must all make concessions. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I was like, so, so the force immediately like starts taking charge. Like, here's the plan. Okay, don't get too close. He's pointing at robot guy. Don't get too close. <laughs> here's the plan. I was like, we're gonna try stick together. Those that uh, can scout. I'm um, looking at uh, maybe Hunter over there. You scout. You. I. I. Many a time, I went out and observed my papa's estate, <laughs> and many things did I find. Let me try here. And I do a perception check. All right. Um, actually, I forgot to do uh, one thing. Uh, Ooh. 13. Before we do that, I just got to mention, uh, who was navigating the map? Uh, we'll, we'll need to make a survival check, make sure you didn't get lost. 100%. Orgus was not. Uh, well, I've got survival <laughs> too. So who's got, uh, who's got I'll survival think, uh, higher? I'll think I've got to get survival. Got it. Uh, it's, hey, uh, uh, can I assist them? Oh, uh, yeah. You weren't driving, so you can go ahead and assist. Yep. All right. Yeah, so no problem. You you are very familiar with uh, reading the uh, the elevation mapping and uh, and, and be able to spot out the, the, the big hill. So no problem getting there at all. So no lost time. Almost a straight shot. You guys made it there in two hours, no problem. I, I apologize. Okay, so what was the perception check for? Uh, sorry, Caspar. Oh, he told me to scout, and so I did because I do what I'm told. <laughs> yeah. Are so you gonna, <laughs> gonna move from your spot, though. I mean, we can all look where we're at, but did you just like stand on the speeder and be like I am looking around? Or... That, was my <laughs> that was my impression. That was... I mean, I got a, I got out a pair of actually they're not on my character sheet, so I can't say I got out any like binoculars or anything. But I'll get that when I can afford them. All right. Yeah. So uh, you notice plus. it's it's a fairly large hill. Uh, you, you suspect to hike it might they take about a, about an hour. You're gonna have to kind of weave back and forth a little bit. There's a, what we call switchbacks, right? Like trails that kind of go up um you will notice that they're kind of worn you don't know if it's necessarily from like animals or something but there is kind of a worn trail um 
and so it's fairly easy to follow. Um, that'll kind of take you up to the top, and then you kind of see it bend around. Um, but looking at the map, you kind of assume that that bend is going to probably lead you up to the, the top of the, the ridge there. Okay. And do we think, uh, for those that have survival, does it look like that you know, we're safe from rock slides? Because if there's like loose gravel and stuff, that could be a concern. At least that's my thought. Well, um, just going to throw this out there that as a scout, anytime we're traveling for an hour or more, uh, difficult terrain doesn't slow us. We can't become lost. Um, I'm always alert to danger whenever we're engaged <laughs> nice. in doing anything. Uh, and I have advantage on survival checks. So nice. if any of that becomes useful. That was all extremely useful. You should have read the map. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Tom so. just snatched the map. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> I, get the map. Yeah. I, I agree. You, uh, you should take point. Oh, wait. <laughs> okay. yeah. All right. So is, is Casper gonna Caspar? Is uh, you gonna lead the way up the the mountain there? Or the the hill I side? absolutely, I absolutely will look like I know what I'm doing while I do it. I can tell you that. <laughs> And you, you <laughs> guys will I'll, always I'll... have uh, the option of pushing the pace a little bit. Um, that that will come with a, maybe a little bit of risk or downside, but you can always push the pace or just kind of take a normal pace. Normal um, pace, man. Be fine, yeah. Normal uh, pace. So guys... Some of these folks here look like they don't run, so take a normal pace. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Tomic's trying to get people to jog because he's like, hey, hey, let's let's move it quickly. <laughs> What, what Revelation's going to, going to uh... pick up Reclaimer and just starts walking like that. <laughs> uh, yeah, so you're, you're kind of going up the, the hillside. Like I said, you don't really see any threats. There's definitely wildlife around, maybe some uh, some birds in the distance. Um, you don't you don't really see anything that's much of a, a danger, I think. There are some poisonous snakes that maybe you have to look out for, but they kind of generally uh, stay to themselves. Um, and, and so as you're going up, no problem. You make it about halfway, um, but you do notice an entrance to a cave. Uh, does the group want to kind of stop, or, or you're more than welcome to just kind of keep going up? Well, oh, that's that's a cave. The worn, like kind of like the the worn trail that maybe like from animal like or caused by animals before to the group. Oh, I would have shared all of that. I was uh, I was seeing it. I would just be constantly going, oh, yes, and look at the animals. I would be constantly <laughs> trying to impress you. Just narrating. <laughs> you, you'll see Tomek, uh he, he kind of zoned out for that, but he sees the animals and hears the cave, and he goes, all right, well, we're, we're ahead of schedule. Let's check the cave. It, it, could, it could be something. It could be an animal. It could be something to hunt. Uh, it could be something sciencey or medically. And it looks over to Orgus and uh, Reclaimer as he tries to sell it to him. Archaeological <laughs> dig site identified. Yeah, For, yes, Force is right. like, no, mission first, fun later. <laughs> oh, it I, could only be a bit of fun. Why not take a look? I... Force is like, All mission right. first, oh. fun later. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. I'd hardly call a cave my idea of fun, but. <laughs> and with that, Orgus is going to put on a pair of sunglasses. I, I just want to bring that up because he's Arcanian. Guys with oh, really yeah. sensitive eyes. So he's, yeah. Ooh, yeah. It's bright. Looking cool, my man. Looking cool. Okay. So, so we write, we mark the thing on the map that there's a cave. And we continue up to the mission. All right. All right. Uh, so there is one kind of uh thing that you would notice that there's some pictures on the outside of the cave um and it's offset a little bit so you'd have to kind of walk over there to see what the pictures are but you do kind of notice uh three pictures and it, it looks like they're extremely like colorful like someone really took some uh some time they're definitely uh, primitive like they were done with something natural maybe some some berries or something for coloring um but you kind of you continue up the um continue up the path uh, you do, you make it to kind of the, the crest, it, it wraps around, and as you get to wrap around the crest, it gets to the top, uh, you notice it levels off and it's flat, uh, and it's it's definitely a good place to kind of um, plant the equipment. Um, I don't, I forgot to, who is carrying the equipment, by the way? 
Forrest Gump. Uh, or right. the other R. Um, I don't care who does me or you, man. Um, uh, no, I don't care. Actually, you're carrying the other droid, so I'll carry it. Right? Because so it's, it's no, no. Long. The other droid is carrying Reclaimer. Reclaimer can be carrying the stuff. <laughs> Forrest carries it at that point. He's like, that's way too much. <laughs> <laughs> that's too much drama over there. <laughs> so. All right. Um, so you make it to the top. Uh, the equipment's kind of it's kind of bulky. It's kind of big. Um, it weighs maybe about a, like 150 pounds. So it's quite heavy. But for fours, uh, that would be no problem at all. Um, you'd be able to kind of hike up with it uh, without much of a, a struggle. Um, yeah. So you get to the top and uh, you, you see kind of a nice place to, to set up the equipment. Um, what does the group want to kind of do? Uh, does it look, look like that there's been any other activity up here besides us? Like survival checks? I don't know, tracking maybe? Let, yeah, let, let's do a survival check, see what the area looks like. Yeah, go ahead and give me one. Just bring up the character sheet, Zony. All right. Okay, so that's, you know, terrible. <laughs> Uh, so you, you kind of take a, a quick look around. You don't really notice any, any tracks or anything necessarily um, out of place. We'll be fine. I'm sure we'll be fine. Uh, just to refresh my memory, how far away are we from um, from the Genesis? I think two hours, right? Yeah, so two hours, which is about um, about a four-day hike, but about a two-hour drive. Okay. Um is there any sort of difference in the flora around here? In the site? Yeah, you notice this is definitely uh, very similar to what you've been in. Um, you know, it, it, it's very like sparse, plainy. There are certainly like trees, um, but they're not like thick vegetation like you would. It's not like a forest. Uh, so they kind of do kind of grow in, in almost like clumps, but it might be like three or four. Uh, trees and they're kind of skinny. Uh, we think of like beech trees or something like that. Curious. The soil so rich, there's so few trees. Oh, just a thought. Write those down. I'm sure the uh, refugees would like that. I Let's find a good place to plant this thing. Right. Noted. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't usually I, carry a pen on me. I, I, otherwise, I would. Um... Here, I got but, um, one. We have. Like, Ford goes in his backpack with four hands and pulls out four pens. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure my, my the gentleman over here has eidetic memory. I was just going to rely on that. And if he gets shot, we can always carry him back. I'm sure someone else can hack into the information. My memory works like that with dead people. Okay. I, um, I enjoyed the joy. <laughs> oh, that guy. Okay. My <laughs> memories are protected. More sparks. Right. But, like, if you're in danger, you'd give us, like, the code or something so that we could save you, you know. Maybe plug you back in. Revelation holds all backups of my mind at once, as well as. 10 megabytes of memories. I tried, man. So. <laughs> Orgus is just staring in astonishment, wondering, out there somewhere, an organic <laughs> took it upon himself to put Revelation together. And he wonders, what was the end goal? What was he making? Comics not ask. smart, but he he's really wondering how much that ten megabytes of memory goes for. So uh the last four time. sets it up on the stand or whatever it is and then just points to uh, reclamation. I'm assuming he's a smart one. Um yeah. your turn. Tag up and he goes to the high five. Just one of the real start racing to meet you, followed by leaning over to the side and falling. <laughs> All right, done, mate. That's recently enjoyed. 
He gets back up, goes over. <laughs> Time to see if this works. And he's going to start uh, working on it. And remember, there's instructions. I guess while... Uh... Unneeded. <laughs> uh, what do I got wrong? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it is with disadvantage, apparently. <laughs> um... Matter of fact, Forrest, Forrest goes back and opens it up right in front of him. Right there is the instructions. Yeah, so you that see this, can't uh... control me. I've decided not to read it. <laughs> oh, burger. Um, so there's yeah, there's this device and it's got these like legs. Uh, so you kind of unfold them. It's pretty obvious, like kind of how to set that up. Uh, and it creates a little bit of a base and on it's a little like terminal and uh, it's got like a big button that says you know start uh, and you hit it and it pulls you through uh some prompts and some uh things you got to punch in some some specific coordinates um etc that's all in the uh documentation um that you're not using i'm pointing to him yep <sighs> like he he's doing it from he's doing it from memory so my smoke's starting to come out, come out of him. <laughs> um, yeah, go ahead. Uh, do you have any? Do you have like um, um, something? That, do you have something that would like a recall memory? Or, it's uh, a droid. Memory, just uh, your ten gig, your your ten megabytes. Yeah, thanks, no, no, that's yeah. that's something else entirely. That that's like that's like the ten megabytes is completely unrelated to the situation. <laughs> <laughs> so you I just... mean, that's just a Word document. That's all that is. <laughs> that's, just, that's just some notes, and not even a lot. I wonder about yeah. the limitations of a spinning disk over two centuries, but... <laughs> uh, so... Yeah, go ahead and give me a, a, an intelligence save. Let's see what happens here. I think we all need one at this point. Um... <laughs> so I, gotta, I gotta ask you, fast. This is very important. At any point during this, does it ask, are you a robot? No, that, not that are you a robot. Just does like, it have like one of the captions? captions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, look, luckily, there's no captcha. Uh, <laughs> anymore. Okay. Find the picture uh, of the rhino. <laughs> error. Error. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. nice. So, yeah. So, it's like punching up. There's like some really specific information, like the exact coordinates of some of the, the star systems, uh, the exact coordinates of where the Genesis are, um, and you're just punching in from memory um, and you nail it. Uh, so you go through this routine. It takes a little while. Like you can tell it's uh, obviously pretty like slow, like the hardware and it just is old um, and it's just not moving fast. So it takes a while to go through this. Um, but as you go through it, like you just nail it. Um, and, and so you get to the end, um, and it kind of starts beeping. It'll start worrying a little bit. Uh, it self positions itself. Uh, and then it starts flashing, uh, success. Uh, so uh, yeah, the device is all set up. So, so he's going to point to four. It's just like, you can check it. All information on that document has been put into this machine. All for memory for when we were traveling. I am very intelligent. Or <laughs> is like, go, brain, go. High five. <laughs> or, <laughs> or, or Orcus is going to uh, sniff the air and say, I, I don't smell any smoke. I think we're fine. I agree, but I think we got a problem. I think those primitives in that cave are probably going to mess with this thing. So we got to wait to camouflage this thing. Or no, we'll yes. just shoot them on sight, and they'll learn from the first. <laughs> they'll see the dead body, and they'll realize that they uh, they don't want to go in that direction. Goodness, are Tyler. you implying <laughs> extermination? No, we're not gonna do that. Uh, I don't oh, know. Just a blaster in. would be fine. I'm sure we have the ammunition. We can have one of my batteries. Tavik, look, no, you have to wait for them to do something hostile. You can't just murder them. That's murder. That's not a hunt. Well, yeah, but I, I'm assuming that they'll come to us, and we'll just shoot the first. First of all, our, 
any of you guys good That's at linguistics and the talky various languages and maybe deal with primitives and stuff? <laughs> Obviously not you. I not... am <laughs> not. However, <laughs> revelation is as Detroit with claw hands wearing furs that force. I'm going to call Bantha Poo on that. Nope. That's what about you, Doc? Um, can you do it? I am uh, fluent in anatomy, not speech. He is a class 3 droid, registered to four languages, and with capabilities of possibly being able to put together what this primitive, unclean language may be. I fear if we claws present... Together. I fear if we present either of these droids to the... Uh, locals they would perceive it as a hostile act agreed let's go look at those images again just to see if uh mr smarty pants over here doc can figure something out with it i can read the images and determine the value of this art from an archaeological point of view i, I so want to believe you man i do <laughs> i want to believe you but uh, okay I so we're gonna study culture we'll head back down to that cave if everybody's in agreement why, of course. Already, cool, let's go. Why wait for them to come to you? All right, well, Tavik, I, I, I believe today may be your lucky day. We shall find something to hunt today. Actually, uh, if as I said, Revelation, sorry, Re Reclaim is going to turn over it. Tavik, just like, if I may ask, my friend, Revelation quite likes furs and skins. So if you flay any of those primitives, may we have the skin. <laughs> it's um, important I'm to gonna... use every part of the animal. I'm going to say no to we that. We can repay you with goods and services. Dominic will shake his head and say, you can't use skins of sentience. If we find an apex predator, I will make you a fur if you're uh, is he, are you his droid or he, he your droid? Either way, if the droid hunts with me, we are can brothers. <laughs> like symbiotic twins and shit. Because that's nasty. Um, okay, um, so let's make a rule here right now. We encounter primitives. We're going to use non-lethal force. You get that Unavailable yeah. attack for first. I mean, even if they sure. attack, non-lethal. Because they don't know what we are, and we're going to be nice and not uh, kick their butts. No, I'll I'll use my non-lethal beam ammo ammunition. <laughs> now I'm not much of a <laughs> non-lethal. Revelation okay, has claws for hands. I do not believe he <laughs> can go non-lethal. <laughs> Let's go yeah. analyze the, the, yeah. the pictures around it first, and then we'll decide. I don't trust yeah. any of y'all. Um, why don't, Reclaimer, uh, why don't the two of you watch the rear? <laughs> but we want to see the primitives and understand their culture. Soon it will be extinct, so I can put it in my museum. I, I, feel like it's, I feel like it's more of a case of you wanting to understand their insides, but I digress. Perhaps. Well, don't don't you aren't you in constant link with your reclaimer too, aren't you? Your part two, you could you could keep leave one in one place and then come in the other, and then you'd see both things. No, we we are individuals. We do not have a psychic link. Well, either way, let's let's see what mysteries the has for us. Yep, outside first. <laughs> Do you have a psychic link with your brother? <laughs> I'm an only child. My condolences. No, it was great. I didn't have to share any of my things. <laughs> <laughs> I so wanted to crush on a different planet. That's so good. <laughs> 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 Did all the crew have to make it? Or... <laughs> so it set up the relay uh it looks like it's operating uh good uh, you're not really concerned that uh, there's going to be any interference from weather or natural events and 
Uh, so you head back down, uh, you know, going downhill this time, plus you're not carrying that thing. Uh, definitely an easy hike. Um, you get back down to the, the cave, uh, and you notice the, the three paintings. So you guys going to... And so the cave is actually set back a little ways, um, so it's off the ridge, maybe about 20 feet, 20, 25 feet. Um, so you kind of, uh, as you're approaching, you're looking at the pictures, um, and there's three paintings, and they look like they were um, painted with you know, whatever they could find in, in the local fora to use um, as uh, as colors, um, but it's very vibrant and, and it, very happy looking. Um, definitely was painted in, in um, maybe even by like children, um, but, but you know, definitely um, in, a, in a nice and uh, colorful way, almost to share among family. And, and it almost tells a story. Um, and so the first picture you look at um, it, it looks like it's um, people around a uh, fire. And, and so you can definitely tell they're like humanoid. Um, and they might even have like a, maybe a little bit of fur on them. But the picture isn't that detailed. It, it looks like maybe it was smudged with their hands a little bit. Um, but they're sitting around a, a fire, um, maybe about 20 or 25 people sitting around a fire, kind of enjoying the fire in celebration. Uh, and then it shows kind of the second picture uh, and it shows those same like people and families and they're like packing up. Uh, so they're kind of packing up their gear and their belongings and almost like they're planning on a journey. Um, and then there's kind of a third picture. Um, and, and this one is a little bit darker and it's a picture uh, like the sky is kind of going, uh, you can tell like the sky is almost smudged out with something gray. Um, and where the sun would normally be uh, in, in the pictures in the previous, it's actually just an outline of uh, maybe like it looks black with just a little bit of an outline on the outside um, and then kind of smudged over with that gray. Um, yeah, and it, it kind of looks like there's an overhead and, the, and it's dark out um, and there's some type of monsters almost like flying in the sky. Um, and, and so those are kind of the three paintings that you see. Um, but you don't, you don't hear anything or see anything from the outside. It, it doesn't look like anyone has necessarily been around for a little while. Um, oh, nice. Historical okay. knowledge. It can Ruler. look at, like who this came from, as well as its value. <laughs> um, Actually, there might be some, some value in it. Uh, it's definitely from a species that's unknown um, in the, the galaxy, uh, like a primitive artwork. Uh, so, you know, I think there might be some people that would definitely be interested in it, um, if you could find someone to sell it to, whether that was an image or somehow you preserved the, the site. So there would certainly be some value. Um, but its original purpose is that it's, you know, it, it looks like... Um, just trying to tell their their history and, and what has uh, transpired with these people. What so do the monsters this... look like that you mentioned? Yeah, the, you can't tell that well from the, the paintings, um, but it, it doesn't necessarily look like they have wings per se, but almost like uh, floating or flying. Uh, like spirits or, or, you know, some type of um, monster, but it doesn't look like it's a it's a real thing. It almost looks like it's something from maybe like a child's imagination. Um, just to get an idea, you said they that the figures are humanoid. How big are these uh, pieces of art, roughly? Yeah, so you notice the the art is kind of painted at like eye level, um, and it, it's fairly large. Maybe the painting is about three foot tall. Hmm. So, even though the skill is that of maybe a a talented uh, humanoid artist in more civilized places, this is probably painted by an adult. Then that can be kind of deduced from the height. Yeah, you'd think that either by a really, really tall child or um, yeah. an adult. <laughs> Fair. Okay. But, yeah, and, and it does. It, it looks like someone really kind of took care in it, um, but they're definitely not like a professional. Um, and, and so the, the lines kind of smudge together, and some, some of the features are hard to see. 
but you can tell it was someone that truly took the time uh, and, and cared about the drawing. Um, is there anything that around the floor of that area that would give any sort of indication as to how long ago this was or what was used or anything along those lines? Yeah, so you notice it was actually like purposely kind of cut into like a like a, there's a little bit of an alcove over it uh, to present, like kind of preserve it from the weather a little bit. Um, so it's kind of stayed nice, but it has started to fade. Um, and actually, go ahead and give me give me a survival or um, investigation check. Yeah, I'm going investigation with my uh, very negative wisdom modifier. <laughs> All right, nice. So, is that tr really advantage on it, or is that a fourteen? Oh no, no, no. That's uh, I'm sorry. That's fourteen. I just have it to set oh, to roll yep. advantage. Yeah, no problem. So you kind of look, and, and you can tell that it's from like, from you know, like I said, berries or maybe uh, like some flowers they were able to crush up, um, and it's definitely like faded a little bit. So you'd expect maybe like a it was painted maybe like a month or two ago. Hmm. Okay. Well. Does anybody have anything else they'd like to do here? I don't want to hog it. Well, as much as I want to go in, I don't trust two of you all, and you know who you are. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> right. I don't Just afraid you're going to end up. Uh, yeah, no, I actually. Just saying, I'll let you all think about that. <laughs> well, actually, I'm going to give you guys a couple minutes to think about it because I need to get myself a new drink. So we'll take a little break. Oh, perfect. I was supposed to have a break. Uh, what, what time are you thinking, Keith? Uh, yeah, we'll come back maybe like just five minutes. Is that okay with everyone? Works, me. It works. All Party right. on. See you in a bit. See you in a bit. All right. Welcome back, everybody. We're at part two of Stranded. Uh, one quick plug before I turn it over to Keith. Uh, make sure to join us tomorrow for our game of the month, Lancer. Uh, we're going to be giving away a copy of the PDF of the RPG. So join us, get a chance to win, and uh, get to see some uh, mechy craziness uh, with the system. So make sure to come through for that. Uh, oh, also, too, because uh, this one's going to be on a little bit of a different YouTube. Uh, make sure to sub to our YouTube, too. So this is uh, Stranded Campaign and the Lancer one. Um, are going to be under the uh, the Tegan J Gaming YouTube. So uh, there's a link on the About section. Make sure to drop a sub there. Uh, but that's it. I'm going to be quiet again and turn it back over to Keith. All right. Uh, so the group uh, went and placed the was asked to place two relays. They placed the first relay. Um, and now they're headed back down the mountain, and they found a cave. Um, and so the cave had a picture a couple pictures that showed out a, a scene of uh, maybe a family uh, living happily and then uh, packing up and, um, and now you kind of assume at this point that they uh, that they left uh, but we'll see what the the group wants to do if they want to go explore the cave or um, head on back and finish the mission so what do you guys think of Oh, Tomic's so like see already part way in the cave <laughs> yeah, <laughs> can we <laughs> Can we see this? I would have followed him right behind him. Yeah. I want to keep reading the comic as it goes. Yeah. Can we see the speeder from where we're at? If we look over the side of the mountain, can we see the speeder down below or no? Um, yeah, we'll be able to say you could probably see the speeder from uh, where you're at. It, it's quite a distance away still. Um, but yeah, you could probably see it. And we don't, uh, and there's no like accidental Jawas on planet destroying it right now, right? <laughs> that's usually no, what it, happens when you leave. No, not Jawas. Uh, <laughs> no, no, it looks like the, the speeder is right where you uh, left it, and um, okay. there are no uh, raccoons uh, sentient or thereof uh, messing with it. Okay. We're going again. 
No uh, killing primitives. Okay. Peaceful mission. No promises. <laughs> you don't promise, you don't go. That's the rules. I, I solemnly I can... swear that I am not to go no good. And uh, so what's kind of the the marching order as you go in this cave? And, and let me just explain it a little while, uh, a little bit as you go in. As you see, uh, kind of this nice large opening. Um, it's maybe about 20 foot uh, wide. And then as you go in, uh, it kind of narrows off. And you kind of see a tunnel uh, going off to kind of the back of the cave. Um, you hear some running water um, inside. Uh, but other than that, you don't necessarily um, see or or hear anything um, inside the cave. And, and it's dimly lit, so there is certainly a little bit of light. Uh, you can see that maybe there's some openings in the top of the cave where some sunlight comes in. Uh, it's definitely not br brightly lit, um, but you know you, you can certainly see inside. Um, so kind of how is everyone kind of going in and, and uh, what do you guys want to do? I'll go first. If I may, me bag. Well, go on. If, if I may, I was going to ask if I could borrow a torch for us, and then I can go on ahead and take a look. See, I promise not to shoot anything without asking first. A, a, so you torch. don't have any glow rods. I mean, I got stuff, but you don't have any. I mean, there's. You got a glow rod? Because fire. I'm might just checking my inventory. I'm not. I'm not certain. I invested. The explorer like pack has two glow rods. Just let you know. Oh no, I do have I do have a glow rod. Never mind, I can do this myself. I am mildly capable. <laughs> he pat you on the back. He's like, "Good job," sarcastically, of course. But yeah, good job. <laughs> Tom is oh, the light him. will give us away. You know? <laughs> yeah, but say we can't see you, so you may want to use it when you can't. Just saying. yeah, the Orgus is very much uh, glow rod. This place is perfectly lit. What are you talking about? <laughs> ah, I well, forget. Every sometimes, sometimes you walk up to a corner that's poorly lit, and you need a flashlight. Have you never brought out your phone multi tool because you couldn't quite find your keys at night? That's all never. I'm saying. I no, because are. unlike you, I have compartments. <laughs> also, Revelation is great at keeping track of those. Your anyway, let's go department. ahead. Yeah. Um, so yeah, as you're kind of going through, the first thing you kind of notice is there are like spots on the wall uh, where where maybe they would have had some type of light source, like maybe a torch or something, um, and they're largely gone or uh, no longer lit. So you can certainly still see in the cave. It isn't it isn't dark. Um, but it is, like I said, dimly lit. So if you don't have uh, enhanced vision or a light source, you might might struggle just a little bit. Um, but as you're going through, um, go ahead and roll me a perception check. Is this a uh, perception check based on sight? It would be based on sound. Hmm. Everybody or just the... I have... Um, it I would depends. assume everyone in the... me. Yeah. It, how far, like how far when you're scouting ahead, how far would you be? Um, I would say that I never get out of eye shot. Like they're never more than say a room or so behind me. So okay. maybe 30, 50 feet at the most. Uh, and if, yeah, there are so torches, everyone... if there are torches that aren't lit, I'll grab one off the wall and then use my uh, uh, lighter tool and light it up. Yeah, so you can go ahead and definitely uh, go ahead and do that. Um, yeah, so everyone go ahead and give me a perception check. And it is based on sound, so if you have something to do that, that would be oh. an advantage. All right, I did roll a stealth check, just because I am trying to avoid going noticed. Okay. So, like, I'll, I'll bring out my glow rod if I want to take a closer look at something, but for the most part, I'm trying to avoid being noticed and just get a cursory look ahead. Yeah, so as you kind of go in, you don't hear or see anything. Um, but as uh, kind of some other people start coming into the cave, Caspar uh, and Tavik, actually, you would kind of notice that there's almost maybe a little bit of a tremor um, in the ground. Um, and it kind of starts off kind of slow, like, uh, but it, it's, it starts to definitely 
become noticeable. You can hear almost maybe some scraping noises under under the, the ground um, as uh, the rest of the group uh, starts to enter in the cave there. Do you, do you all hear that? You see Tom, I'm not quite sure what to make of it. Puts his head down to the ground, kind of feeling the vibrations, and kind of like see like a big smile goes off his lizard face. Something big. Oh, hunting! Legitimate hunting! I mean, hunting! <laughs> well, we're still at exploring stage, trying to make first contact. Let's not kill those we want to talk to first. Arlo, it only counts if Revelation can decipher their language. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so as you're kind of coming in, uh, you kind of uh, see it almost branches a little bit. And off to the the right, you kind of see like some water, maybe some uh, standing water, um, maybe a maybe fed through maybe a natural spring. And then off to the left, um, it kind of continues on, and you can actually see maybe a drawbridge uh, in the distance. And then you this rumbling underground. It, it's not necessarily a rumbling so much as now a scraping, and it's coming kind of from all around you it wouldn't sound like it's necessarily just from one source um but you can kind of hear this scraping all around you and it starts to echo through the cave a little bit well, Tom, like to put together someone what may know be. where we are i gotta go defensive. Um, um, yeah what was your what was your check uh oh yeah 23 yeah, tavik would know tavik would know that there is something burrowing underground around you and it's a lot of things um, but they're not necessarily large. Uh, but you would definitely know that there's something burrowing around you. And it's um, it started really small, and you heard it just a little, and now it's increasing. And so his tail's like literally thumping with excitement. It was not one thing. It is many small things right beneath our feet. They are coming to meet us. This will like be a glorious everybody, hunt. <laughs> everybody back against the wall in case the floor gives away. <laughs> Tavik is, is, when they close in on you, still considered a hunt? Well, they are being the hunters. Yes, you're we're going to flip the table, so we'll be the hunted once they come out. Wait. Tavik, I think you might have... Well, I, I get your meaning, regardless. The floor is, defi uh, the floor is definitely like active. What? You can hunt while also being bait. It's a thing. This I one would it. like one of their bodies to preserve in my collection. I'll make you join a hide of one. You are a saint. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Uh, so go ahead and put yourselves on the map where you think you'd kind of be. Uh, this was the entrance down here. I managed the drawbridge up here uh, and the kind of the water down here. So wherever you think you're kind of would be in this, you're welcome to throw yourself up. Well, do we know where? Because, okay, so that's our... Uh, where's our scout? Because I think we'd all be behind him at this point. You know, the, uh, the, the T-1000 is a very appropriate sort of uh, looking token there. Yep. Based on everything <laughs> right That's um, how I imagined him looking. I don't know why. I would argue I'm pretty close to the bridge there. I don't know why I imagined like a bad animatronic with its stilted <laughs> movements and like the jaw hanging loose. All right. Where would Tavik be? No, I, can, I do have like the Disney president like uh, animatronics in my head for it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, by the way, th this one is a uh, reclaimer. This one's a revelation. Okay, nice. Right. Yeah, so since you guys kind of know this is coming, you're welcome to kind of place yourself uh, wherever think you think it's appropriate. So I'm like, uh, oh, like getting okay. at the wall. So then I, then I, don't I know absolutely would have gone to the back. Don't know if it's uh, possible with a 23, would he be able to find like where it sounds like most intense from the burrowing? Yeah, you kind of hear it's moving around you a little bit. So yeah, I'll just point out some spots that maybe you would have um, heard. So you probably hear something down there, um, but then you kind of hear a lot of noise coming like from this, like down and around this area. Perfect topic is going right to the thick of it. <laughs> question can i take out my gun i promise not to shoot until you say so i just want to know like i want to have it in case i need it you can go kind of defensive thing. yes okay and if it's a critter that's not uh, humanoid then 
feel free to defend yourself, but try not to kill primitives. So ignore the sentient, sentient crafts. Got it. All right. And so as you kind of kind of gathering around and, and trying to to look around, you're hearing these noises. You start to see pop out of the ground um, some creatures. They don't look humanoid, right? <laughs> They definitely are not humanoid. Um, they are, they almost appear uh, like large centipedes or, or maybe uh, worms. Um, and so they pop out of the ground. So you can tell they definitely like burrow and live in the ground. Um, and they do not look friendly. Uh, so they kind of on their, on, on their faces there, uh, they stand about three foot long. Uh, so they're kind of a smaller creature and they open up and they've got just uh, like rows of teeth um, and they're kind of starting to hiss at you and go ahead and everyone roll me initiative. Make sure you click on your character first. I say don't forget to put the tracker too, Keith. Oh yeah, yeah. Sorry. The, the thing. There it is. Oh, uh, sorry, who wants you. to do tactical initiative? Oh yeah, we're doing that. I'm down for that. <laughs> It'd be nice to be on the other side of tactical. If you guys want to do it as a whole, I'm good. Yeah. I've never you I've never used it, so I'm gonna say yes just because, but uh if it benefits the group, then let's do it. Yeah, you're certainly welcome to do it. Okay. I'm in for it. So we got a lot of high oh. people. We got two people with twenty initiatives, so oh. you know, just saying. Um <laughs> and one not so twenty. <laughs> I, I gotta extend my thanks for making me feel better about my six. Yeah, he's got a plus four too. He's got a plus. <laughs> that was a. One. So we're going last. We're going last, yeah. We're going... <laughs> oh, that, that's that's true. Oh, oh, one. Hey! <laughs> oh, we got one behind us. So is this space here uh, uh, occupiable space? Um, I would say that space is probably blocked. Like you can probably, it, you know, you could fight through it. You could hit or hit around it, but you probably couldn't stand in it. Mm, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna use that bad feeling because I don't <laughs> like being all the way over here. I forgot all you got right. the operative. I forgot you got yeah. So yeah. you guys are going. Who's all going tactical? Is everyone going tactical? I think so. So okay. I'm good. Yeah. I don't see myself on the initiative tracker, so that's concerning. But did you click on yourself before you rolled it? Because that can impact it. But I, I might have got it up too slow too. So yeah, just go ahead and roll it again, and then it fix it. Oh, it looks like okay. That's fun. And we are all stuck at five now, thanks to Tavik. Uh, so you guys can go and update that too. Oh. I just swapped oh, it. Oh, okay. Awesome. Did that come up for you? Mm -hmm. Yep. So you're on there now. Okay. Cool. All right. So everyone, if you're going tactical, set your initiative to five. Oh, oh <laughs> that's what that means. <laughs> yeah. I, I, he had a tech power that could have helped with that too, but I forgot about this. But <laughs> luckily, it gives me more uses of explosive or element of surprise, which are always fun. Okay. I'm trying to fix it. Yeah, that's going to hurt. Um. Oh, that's what I forgot to do. All right. Um, I've got a random. Oh, I never cleared it from last time. Hold on. Uh, that's what's wrong. I'm like, why is there all these like random things on here? That's the worst. There's because we can't see the random things too. You have to kind of go through and figure out which is which. I always hate when I forget to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Uh, yeah, I'm just like, why is there so much stuff on here? Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah, sometimes I don't know if roll toys been slower lately, but it takes a while for it to load in there, so you don't see it right away, and then you already have people rolling initiative. Uh, <laughs> 
Yeah, I'm, I'm learning there's some tricks to this. All right, so I think everyone should be set. I guess we'll switch you over. All right, let me order it. Ah, okay, there we go. Okay. Um, descending. All right, cool. All right, so the worm right in front of you guys actually is going to act first. Um, and he's going to pop out and immediately take a swipe at uh, fours. Okay. Uh, 17 AC. All right, so he's going to take a bite. Uh, so he's just going to try to just take a bite out of you. He does not have advantage on that, so that is a uh, five. So he whips. It's a miss. Um, next is going to be, what worm is next here? Um, this one down here, he's going to run over and you're going to see him kind of pop around the corner and he's going to spit something at you, um, like a glob of, uh, something that kind of hisses as it goes through the air. All right. Um. Oh, did it roll? Or am I waiting for it still? Yep, there it is. So 12. I assume that is going to miss. Yeah, you see Topic just dodge it with like a ridiculous smile on his face. Yeah, so you kind of, it kind of hits the wall behind you and it kind of hisses uh, and just kind of, you can tell like it's almost acidic, like it's uh, melting the, uh, the stone a little bit. Uh, so this guy's going to come down kind of, and he's going to do the same thing. He's going to, it's now spit at uh, Casper. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, 12. I assume uh, that gonna... does not break my armor class of 17. Although, in fairness, it could have been 19 if I cast a spell when we had the opportunity. <laughs> um, you know, actually, you had time. If you wanted to, you can say that you've already cast it. That's fine. Nope, I'm good. All right. Let um, it ride. So this one's going to... All right. He's going to run up to fours, um, and he's going to take a bite at you, too. Uh, so, wow, 11. Okay, he's going to miss. That's missed. Um, this one down here is going to be confused and take a strike at the, the robot here. <laughs> uh, so he'll take a bite. Uh, 11. Okay. Nice. Uh, it's just oh, so okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, he's going to take another spit, and he'll do it at... Uh, Tavik? 11? Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, yeah. Yeah. All right. So you guys are up now. So you, it's tactical, so you can go in whatever order you want. I am yeah. advocating a... Uh, I am at least going to do a bit of a retreat back to this location. Um, I, I mean, anyone can go first, but that's what I'm. Well, going did to we do did it. we cross the bridge, or we just saw the bridge? I would assume you would not have gotten to the bridge yet. Okay. So. Okay. Well, Forge is just going to start wailing on things next to him. Um, uh, I'll attack the guy to the uh, that's straight ahead of him. That's next to our doc because we need a doctor. Um, so. Uh, as a bonus action with my uh, shield style, I'm going to try and it's probably not going to work, but I'm going to try and do the whole uh, shove prone kind of thing uh, trip um, yeah. with the shield. Oh, um, sorry, didn't mean to click that. Sorry. No problem. Uh, so I'm going to attempt that. Uh, but since I'm using a uh, spiked uh, shield, they'll take damage if they miss their save and get tripped. So uh, let's do that. Uh, let's see. So I believe that's going to be a uh, strength saving throw against my DC. All right. Uh, which is, uh, I think that'd be a 14 total if I'm calculating this right. Ooh, 
Okay, so he, yeah, 21. Okay. So he doesn't obviously trip, so therefore he doesn't take the damage from the shove, and then I'll just smack him with my Viper Blade. Um, um, I actually think a trip, I think you actually get, is that a contested strength check? It is. Uh, yeah, so go ahead and roll me on that. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, I, I rolled my attack on my viral blade. I probably missed the nine, um, but that's a nine. Um, yep. so we'll yeah, nine's going to miss. Uh, got it. And then you said contested strength check. Uh, 17. Okay. Yeah, so you, you don't make it. Uh, quite right. a so either one. Well, do you have athletics? Yes, I just... Uh, What's your athletic? Because it's a, a contested athletic. Oh, it's probably a 19, isn't it? Or do you have expertise? Yeah, so right now it's a plus six. So technically, well, I already rolled it. So I'll just make sure yeah, next time sort of roll, roll the athletics, yeah. you know. So, but either way, the strength might it look like it was balanced out at this point because it's that's the same a, value. That's a so. strong worm. Yeah. 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 So you find that Bad you, like, so. surprisingly, uh, that worm came out of that okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm like, wow, a worthy opponent um, that probably has poison or acid. Okay, next. <laughs> Kaspar will go ahead and uh, do just a little bit of retreat because he does not like... Uh, he, he doesn't like being this close to his targets. <laughs> and so he's going to go back, let's see, to this location. And then shoot at this one right here. All right. So I'm just going to reveal this for you, Cash, because you'd probably uh, see this as you're coming around the, the bend there. That's what that is down the rest of the, the path there. But yeah, go ahead and take your shot. Okay. Oof. Low rolls today. Wow. That... It's going to be a long oh, fight. All right. <laughs> well, uh, I'm going to. Orgus is going to try and give a stab at the worm with his tech blade. Let's oh, see. Um, I, be sorry, before I finish, I need to uh, make this one a bonus action or use a bonus action to mark this one. Use okay. target lock? Yeah, okay. or no, no I'm so, like, uh, uh, sorry, oh, this uh, one. That way, if it moves, I can shoot at it. Oh, okay, nice, with your fighting style. Oh, oh sharp shooter, yeah. So, actually, you would have to give me an opportunity attack. Uh, so, he's going to take a swipe at you as you're running away there. Oh, I was in range of one of those guys. Okay, that's fine. Oh, oh fun! <laughs> yeah. First so he actually uh, does a, he, yeah, he takes a bite at you as you're, as you're running there. Okay. Are right. uh, we doing the dismemberment thing? I'm sorry, I, ha I have to ask. Yes, we'll do the dismemberment. Dude! I'm sorry. He didn't crit, so you're all right. He didn't... Yeah, he, he didn't bring it up post-crit, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he didn't have a glint in his eyes as he crit you. It's fine. Okay. Uh, now let's see if that's, that tech blade strikes true. All right. Oh, that, that is kind of mess. Just barely. You kind of see uh, it actually just kind of just scrapes the, the worm. As you kind of see his skin is surprisingly tough. Oof. Well, uh, with that, he's going to take a step over here. <laughs> yeah. Yikes. All right. Uh, it would, would be all right if Reclaimer went next. Yeah, go for it, man. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, so he's going to look at Revelation, who's clearly the more capable fighter, and will simply say, Initiate protocols. Combat. Rip and tear until it is done. Uh, and he's going to cast Motivator Boost. Uh, bonus. bonus 2 to AC. Nice. Yeah, and uh, Revelation will even cast something. He will cast as a bonus action because um, uh, Reclaimer is going to use his bonus action to command. Uh, Revelation is going to use his bonus action to use his first level tech power, Sonic Fist. Nice. Uh, 
for the duration you have a natural opening. Okay. Yep. So his claws just start uh, vibrating as he's going to try and cut. Cut. Uh, uh, which one? This one right here. Cut this one down. All right. Nice. So what's that dismemberment? <laughs> nice job. Nice job. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you said it was this one? Uh, yes. That one right there. All right. So you actually see him go down, but uh, give me uh, 2d20s. All right. So uh, uh, may I? Oh, my God. Um. Oh, <laughs> oh, now the 20s are wow. Oh, now the 20s. Use them now. Um, <sighs> Almost. That, 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 uh, so, yeah, how do you take him down? So, after being told to rip and tear, uh, Revelation just lends eye flares, takes his claws, goes straight into this thing, pulls it back out, and most of its insides are now splattered everywhere as he, as he instantly, his eyes turn to this one with a menacing aura about him. Um, uh, and he seems to be, uh, yeah, basically, uh, it looks like he's going to be teaming up with, uh, Topic here, as Reclamation himself is going to move right here, Topic is in, uh, actually, no, he's going to scooch, 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 there we go. All right. Good job. Tava gives him a nod of respect uh, as he kind of eviscerates uh, the slug. That is the way, droid. Uh, <laughs> you see him kind of bring out his own mechanical claw. Uh, and he's going to try to uh, make uh, some quick slashes at the one right in, uh, in between the, the sandwich of droids and bearables now. All right, he's going uh, to do uh, first like have his regular attack and his bonus action and maybe flurry too. All right, that's a hit. All right. Uh, that's a hit. Uh, so I have to make uh, two wisdoms. Oh, pretty consistent with the damage there. Uh, two wisdom saving throws if they're still up. <laughs> uh, they will not. So he's going to go down. All right, so you see Tava kind of like slash twice with his mechanical claw, clearly trying to outdo the droid with how he just kind of cuts through uh, an eviscer, kind of just digging into the uh, the slug flesh and just kind of taking chunks out of it with each thing. Uh, you see him give a nod over to R2, it was, right? But did the, uh, was it R1 or R2? I got mixed up with which was which. Uh, he's R1. He's, right. he's R2. He gives him a nod over to R1, like, uh, it's kind of like, a, look at that. Uh, and he's going he's gonna to spend a key point to uh, move a step up uh, and make his last attack uh, at this guy over here. All right. And uh, with that. Yeah, and that one will miss. He got super confident as he's looking back to R1. <laughs> uh, it just tries to slash and just whiffs the air. <laughs> Wait, yeah. it just hit me. We just rolled three nat twenties in a row earlier. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> the, the Which way is it rolled today? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. Does anyone else uh, still have a go? Or did everyone go? If I have time to add, I would say, just an FYI, everyone, there are dead bodies in my direction. If you feel the need to run, this might not be the right way. I shall be there in just a moment and collect those corpses. So much glee in his voice. <laughs> All right, and so uh, it's going to be the worm down here. After seeing you uh, cut through one of his buddies, he's going to run up on Tavik, uh, and he's going to make uh, another bite attack, um, and he's going to use pack tactics, so he will have advantage on this. Nice. Uh, so he'll hit, I assume, with a 20. He will. Uh, it'll be 9 kinetic damage. All right. Uh, you see as he gets hit, uh, he's going to trigger uh, his element of surprise. You see a little bit of uh, kind of on cybernetics, like a little flare open up, and it kind of shoot a stream of fire at the guy. Uh, so DC yeah. 13 dexterity saving throw. Nice roll, too, with that. Nice. Uh, you said DC 13 dex. <laughs> All right, uh, so he's going to fail that. And 
that is enough to finish him off. So how do you finish him? Yeah, so you see as uh, he gets like bit into, and he looks like not like deadly hurt, but that definitely hurt him. Like, he's, uh, he's feeling it. Uh, you see the cybernetic that Gus installed open up, uh, and just a blast of uh, flames come through and consumes the worm. Nice. All right. Uh, so we're back at the top of the order. That one's down. Uh, so it's the one right next to you. Um, and he's going to take a, take a bite at you, seeing you take down two of his buddies. Um, and he will not have advantage, but that'll still be a 17. Oh, hit. Yeah, it just hits. Ooh, four damage. This one kind of up at the top here. Um, and he's going to see uh, someone running away, and he's going to take a spit. So he's going to spit at Casper. Dude. <laughs> he sees acid fly through the air. Uh, and I assume that's going to whiff. Uh, yeah, that does not... Yeah, Casper just nimbly dodges out of the way. That's the wrong accent. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> he's Australian now. It's fine. Yeah. Uh, the one right next to... Papa Ford. didn't make me Australian. Papa made me special. Yeah. Uh, so the one right next to Forrest takes a bite, uh, and he's going to whiff it. Yeah. And that one's dead. Um, this one is going to run up on R2, R1, robot something. Mm -hmm. uh, and he is going to uh, take a bite. And that oh will no! Uh, for uh, three kinetic damage. Uh, it's not a crit, oh, I, so let's. Yeah. I actually don't have anything for reaction spells. I think I completely forgot about that. Uh, so that's going to be three damage. All right, uh, and that was their turn. So you guys are back up. Yep. I think our so shooter was first. It was very strange as a DM. It really is. Really <laughs> <laughs> Where are the mob now? You don't really know nope. who's doing well until like the end of the round. <laughs> that, that's actually old school, like one E rules way back in the day. That's how initiative was done. It was like one side goes first, and then the other side. Well, I know some people who roll initiative every single round. I've heard oh, that style. Okay. I feel like you just oh, every round? Yeah, that's crazy. That sounds it just sounds dang. exhausting. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, this is our... just just what five E combat needs. Yes, more exactly. dice rolls. <laughs> um, I'm still getting used to the names. Is a scout you were you fired first last time? I think or no? Um, I might have. I think you went first last okay, time. I'll actually, go first. So I, I, will... I shot after you did. I'm gonna move myself in between just because uh, uh, the guy that's uh, spitting at our friend is not cool. So. I'm actually going to try and uh, shove that one to trip again, and this time I'll do it right with. Uh, All right. Yeah. You mean athletics? Athletics as a bonus action. All right. Uh, yeah. So you knock him down. He is okay, so Now, if I'm doing the spike shield property correct, um, it actually says they take damage one d four plus my strength modifier. So I want to make sure that's correct. Uh, I think that, I, I, that's I'm going to assume it's correct. We can look after. But for now, just yeah, go okay. for it. Okay, so let's see if I can. so uh, Ooh, nine nice. from the nine from that, and then I'll smack the same one with the if it's still up, I'll hit it with the viper blade. Uh, yeah, and, that definitely hurt him, but he's alive. Uh, so is he actually he's actually prone at this point? Yep, he's still prone. Okay, so I'll hit him with the viper blade advantage. Yeah. So does a fifteen hit? Fifteen barely hits. How do you finish him? Uh, just. It, I'm just going to cut them in half, whatever parts fall off. That's great. Um, and then just turn <laughs> to the other one. You know. Um... So in that case, if I'm assuming you're done, Kaspar yeah. will shoot at Yon. Using the wrong tool. Yon Worm. Mark it as his ranger's quarry, which is apparently not an action, and shoot at it again. I cannot keep an accent straight. I'm going to be struggling with this. 
<laughs> and there we go. Oof. Ooh, an 11 would miss. Man, rolls are not working for everyone. Dang. All over the place today. Well, the good news is next round I can avoid shooting and reload instead. Well, it's just your bonus action to reload, so if you haven't used your bonus action, yeah. you can reload. I will do that then, yes. If you bought the belt thing, you can reload for free. That too. Yes, yeah. but why in this moment? I'm not using my bonus action for anything. <laughs> there you go. That belt, though. <laughs> it's nice. It's nice. Oh, yeah. And uh, I'll move on and hold on to my reaction. Okay. Topic will gesture to the droid. Got to give him uh, first cracks at it. All right. So, uh, first of all, is Reclaimer. He's got to do his thing. Bonus action to command uh, Revelation, of course. But main action, he is going to. Let's see here. He's going to start the blasting. Uh, the one over here and as an action casting rhyme shot and if it hits i that that last got the level to slow all right uh 19 hits give me some damage uh six, six. damage and he slow all right and which one was it uh the one right here all right the last so that definitely uh hurt him but he's still up uh, Just put that so he slowed. And now Revelation, as the Doom music intensifies, he's going to just step on, onto and over the bodies. <laughs> uh, walk up to this one. I'm going to do this the cool way. He's going to attempt to grab this one uh, right here and kind of grapple it. Uh, he can use his dex for this. No. Nine. Jesus. Uh, and that's still a uh, strength save by them, or a strength check by them. Yep. That's uh, very great. unfortunate. That's very unfortunate. 11. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he has a bonus action, though, which he will use to attack. Uh, forget which Sonic fist. 23 for 14 damage. Nice. How do you finish him? Uh, so it's very clear he was going to attempt to grab it, so like pull up to his face or toss it, something like that. But that doesn't go off. He's just a bit too slow. And instead of grabbing him, he accidentally just shreds him immediately, like in the motion to like pick him up. And it just turns him into this sliced uh, puddle onto the ground. And it's very clear he wanted to do something cool. But he'll take that. But they have a miss. Uh, Misty on his part. And in that moment, Kaspar is going to say, Falls, uh, my warning shots don't seem to be very effective, but it does seem as though we've abandoned diplomacy, am I correct? It's hard to <laughs> diplomatize with centipedes. I was hoping okay, I just... you would know the difference. Well, you, you, came very, you came very strongly on me earlier for, you know, non-lethal damage and this was about as non-lethal as i thought i could get so i thought i'd ask <laughs> i appreciate good it good to know you thank tried. you you tried man and i'm like you tried dude you tried. <laughs> i feel you man um uh if can you forge use the reference movement i just want to move back in front of our doctor and uh so the centipede doesn't try to get oh uh, yeah so i just go back to where i was and... all right uh yeah, so uh, seeing uh, the droid eviscerate another one, uh, you see kind of uh, Tavok got his game face on. Uh, it just leaps out the last one. I gotta remember, like, Tavok has reach with his cybernetic arm. That's a trade off for his net one thing, but I keep forgetting to use that. Oh, that's uh, nice. But he's gonna, he's a snake. He's, he likes to be up close and grimy. Uh, so he's gonna make uh, two slashes and maybe another, uh, probably another. Oh, there we go. Uh, he's gonna flurry. Actually, let me see how that goes before he flurries. Uh, he's probably gonna flurry. Yep, he's hurt, but he's not down. Uh, and that hits, and it won't—it won't matter. You did enough without the psychic. So, how do you finish him? 
Yeah, so you see like, the first hit, he slashes uh, kind of widely, just kind of whiffs it through. Uh, then he just goes in with a low cut and then a down cut and just sends it into a couple different pieces uh, as he kind of looks over to R1 for approval. Yeah, it looks like as though combat's still in, like the moment combat's out, he's going to give you like the you son of a bitch hand. <laughs> R1's the one that has like the, uh, the hides too, right? Yeah, yeah, he's got the hides and all that. Yeah, so, so yeah, Topic likes R1. <laughs> and he's going to move up a little closer to uh, get closer to Gus, and that's the end of his turn. Well, uh, as uh, Gus Orgus <clears throat> uh, sees Fours walking towards him, he's like, I, I do believe you missed one. And he's going to try <laughs> pulling out his uh, blaster pistol and taking a shot at it. Oh, I forgot. Uh, Gus had a gun. <laughs> yeah. He's oh, yeah. Not, not doing so good with the whole stabbing thing. So let's see how this works out. Uh, 19 hits. Yeah, give me some damage. Well, Forrest gives you a golf clap with the other spare yeah. hands. Don't forget your sneak attack, too. Oh, I, oh, I Jolly good. Not. Oh, yeah. yeah. Jolly good. Nice. So that's enough. Finish him. Oh, so uh, almost like he's not expecting it to work. He just kind of fired one off and he sees it like, I guess, reel back and then slump forward and he'll look at fours and say, oh, never mind. And put his gun away. <laughs> Tommy gives him like a real hearty pat in the back. Hey, you've been practicing. Oh, voice. You've been practicing. <laughs> Good God, I need to. Ooh. Thank you. Very proud. Right. You didn't shoot a primitive. Thank you. Um, <laughs> the day is young. All right. So you guys are now out of combat. And uh, would you like to kind of explore the rest of the area? I'll just reset the map here. I think I can do that. Do you guys collect I, your I trophies? I did mention there are bodies whatever. in this direction. If Wrong you'd like button. to come take a look. Sorry, hold on a sec. Uh, Revelation's gonna go up to Tobak and do, do I say what do the use of the handshake, bring him in, oh, yeah, be he... very careful about the blades. <laughs> Tomic meets and he goes, I like this droid. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so assume you uh, you, can you guys see the map now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, all right, move up. Um, so as you kind of explore the rest of the cave, uh, you find, um, so besides the worms, you guys find these bodies, uh, and you assume that they're the Shalbats, and they kind of look like, um, Bothans a little bit. They're kind of fur covered, um, but they stand about six foot, five, five foot or six foot tall, like a normal, uh, size and they do have uh, you know fingers um, but their toes are maybe a little bit claw tipped um, but yeah you can see that there are several of them in the cave um, and they have unfortunately passed away um, also inside uh, the cave you find um, it looks like that there's maybe some people living here uh, not that long ago maybe two or three months um, and this, uh, kind of, so this is what they're dwelling and there's like some sleeping areas and maybe some common areas. Um, and yeah. So what do you guys want to do? This, this cavern, does it look natural? I mean, assuming it's not like man carved walls with machinery. I'm assuming it's a natural cavern, correct? It is. It is natural. And you can see that some of the areas, maybe they maybe changed a little bit. Like they obviously put the drawbridge in. Um, but overall, yeah, it's largely a natural, you know, natural cave. Reclaimer's yeah, taking just... everything. He's he's right in this place. He he, he <laughs> sees something he likes, takes it. it like it's very clear. Like it, like it's like uh, a, a a line on repeat. A fine addition to my collection. A fine addition <laughs> to my collection. It's like as yeah. you like take. Taking things, some things that are, that were probably garbage, some things that were probably valuable. He he's very interested in all of them. And as uh, Revelation is putting the bodies on his back, just like falling. Whoa, 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 
He's gonna wait, he's gonna wait. go ahead and ask him to stop messing with the bodies because he wants to take a closer look, maybe yeah, understand right. what happened here. Like if you want to carry uh, the centipedes, that's all cool and stuff. But let's leave oh. the human bodies over there. <laughs> oh, okay. Check them out carefully. Okay. Are you like you centipedes all day long, man? That's all you. You can have it. Uh, but uh, is but... um is he repeating that line over and over? The uh, fine addition to my collection. Sometimes he cuts himself off with it. Other times, like a fine addition to my collection. <laughs> Sometimes it's like it kind of buzzes a bit. And that's R two, right? That's R2. Yeah, so Topic looks over to R1 and just shakes his head. <laughs> R1 gives, gives a sympathetic look of like, God, 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 you wouldn't understand. We've this known is, this uh... guy for a while, though, now. So, like, we should be able to tell if this is just, you know, a quirk in his programming or if it's something that's horribly wrong and we need to look up at him and figure it out now. Like, we can tell the difference between those two things. Probably not. It's pro It's hard to tell. This guy, this drug's pretty old. Sometimes it's like, oh, yes, that makes sense. He's just doing something. And then he catches on fire. <laughs> well, so. Orgus will muse aloud and say, I didn't think that today would be a day that I would envy to death. <laughs> oh, goodness. Okay, so Mars is like, let's move carefully. Let's go. Um... Orgus is going to take a uh, careful look at the bodies and try to determine yeah. what what caused them to expire. Sure, give me either a medicine check or investigation. A medicine check will be easier. Well, thankfully, it is. Uh... All right, nice. So yeah, you're you're able to take a look at them. And you find that there's like uh, strange wounds on the body. They're uh, small in diameter, um, but it looks like something burrowed into the skin. Oh dear God! Yes, I like the centipedes. He's going to kind of gesture and like. You see how the flesh is kind of burst outward in a way. He's going to go ahead and then go into detail explaining. What he thinks might have happened with the. As an uh, FYI, this is not the kind of experiment I was thinking I had in mind. <laughs> I'll take that one off the list. Don't worry. Um, based on the uh, centipedes, did they kind of. Their mouths. It's a little hard to tell from the token, but. Yeah, so they kind of open up. They're kind of like a weird face. They kind of open up, and uh, you just see kind of rows of teeth. Uh, so kind see. of the top of their head kind of opens up into a large. Hmm. And, and I actually, with a 23 medicine check, I'll just give you a little bit more information. It, it looks like something grew inside of them and then burrowed its way out. Um, but significantly smaller than the worms you were fighting. Face hookers. <laughs> Goodness. <laughs> with that, uh, Orcus is going to kind of oh, take out his... His blade and kind of like, well, they're not going to complain about it and kind of open it up to get a better look at the like what happened inside of this. And I guess with that, he'll determine that like the organs have atrophied, like it's like they, they were sucking the nutrients out of them to grow. Does that make sense? Yep. And okay. actually, you'll notice one other thing that you don't really know, like you don't know anything about these species, but the, the fur appears almost like white and you kind of get the assumption that they're older that these the these shell bots are kind of older hmm. maybe yeah, like I'm... elderly of the of the species how do the bodies like look arrayed like do they look like they were unexpectedly burst out of or did they, or do they kind of seem like they were like a, a, a relaxed position yeah, they don't look like they, there was much of a struggle, but it, it certainly looks like they were just kind of going about, because they're randomly arrayed, like they were going about their tasks. Um, and they did not fight back, but uh, they suddenly, it looks almost like they would almost collapse right where they were at. Is there an, entr is there an entrance wound as Forrest kind of yells over the bridge? I'm trying to keep watch over, like left and right over there. But is there an entrance wound? I, I don't think so. He's going to 
roll the body over to see if he see if he notices anything like that. And yeah, um, it, it looks like there was maybe like a like a bite mark of some kind, um, but it didn't immediately like kill them. They stayed a, a, alive for a while, so it would have like partially healed. Uh, you would have guessed. You would have guessed maybe like a maybe some type of like toxin to like incapacitate or or, or paralyze or or something like that would have been used. I see. Well, I don't necessarily see an entry wound, but some sort of small lacerations in the flesh, maybe. Let's so... see if there's any difference with the rest of them. And I mean, that's. That's what I would. I, I don't want to hog it. And is anybody else doing anything? The topic is just standing Caspar has... close over your shoulder, just watching you. He has no idea what's going on, but he's watching you like he does. He's <laughs> what is this crazy <laughs> doctor doing? Why is he cutting a hole in him? The forge is just looking. Go ahead, go ahead, Caspar. Let's go. Caspar is looking at the body and looking at the activity. And just kind of like checking to see if he's accidentally wet himself. And upon <laughs> checking, he's going to find a secluded corner to try and ensure that doesn't happen later by dealing with it now. <laughs> that could be how they got in. Just let you know. I. Watch out where you be, man. He's on. he's aiming over the bridge. <laughs> okay. But Forrest is not looking that way. He's looking to the left and right of the bridge, not at the PB person. And um, I would have let you know so that you don't have to keep look unless you I'm, wanted to. And I'm just uh, trying to see if there's anything outside of where the group is at uh, near the bridge that we just didn't notice before. You know, um, creepy crawlies coming at us or whatever. Um, so that's what I'm doing. Um, sounds or anything. So I, is it okay if I roll a perception check? Yeah, go give me a perception. Eleven. So after Tom, yeah. oh, go ahead. So you don't hear anything. You don't like, hear anything approaching, other than kind of the group behind you. Uh, but you don't kind of hear anything else coming in the cave. After Tom watches him cut open the guy, he's going to start looking through uh, the rooms too, just to see kind of if he finds anything. Because uh, the Barables are kind of a little bit of a primitive society too, so he's looking to see if he finds anything like that may have been important, something left behind, or see anything that may stand wow. out to him. Oh uh, yeah, give me an investigation. He is stupid. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you you just find some like primitive tools, like maybe like stone axes, um, maybe like a bowl and, and pedestal that they use for uh, like grinding, um, maybe like leaves or flowers. You find some bedding, um, but really nothing of significant value. Um, it looks like maybe like anything that they wanted, they probably would have packed up and took with them. That's yeah, it. He, he takes one of the stone axes. Uh, this is a little bit of a trophy. Uh, it brings it with pockets in his uh, his back. A fine addition to your collection. <laughs> you hear it's like a hiss, like everything <laughs> out with him shaking his head and just pocketing it still. It, this is probably like either like either like a couple minutes after he finally finished uh, saying all that, probably did catch on fire and revelation come in, takes the fire extinguisher off of uh, Glamour's back, flips him out, and then <laughs> that from another room. Um, well, there is one more thing that Orgus wants to investigate besides that mm -hmm. that sad little corpse. Um, for whatever reason, this room in the back seems to be more important than the rest. With the what appears to be a throne, is there anything different about the uh, the dead being? I, forget, I can't pronounce the name. I'm sorry. The sh shalbot. Uh, yeah, the shalbots. Shalbots. The uh, shalbot that's resting at what I appear, what I would assume would be like the feet of what might be a throne. Yeah. So this room does. It, it looks maybe a little bit more of importance. Um, don't necessarily view it as a, a throne, but definitely maybe the the head of the family uh, would be there. But it looks like maybe a meeting area. Um, and they also kind of have um, kind of up, up in the corner up here. Uh, they do have maybe some 
like uh, supplies or kind of some bags of, of stuff, but it's mostly kind of like rummage through and, and empty. Uh, but you're welcome to give an investigation if you want to kind of look through. Sure. I mean, try to get a better understanding. This is our first, you know, meeting with them, alive or dead. See what we see what could be understood. I would like way, I'm to gonna uh, make use a perception my arcanium, check, just general. Arcanian brilliance to uh, add a d4 to that. Oh, nice. Yeah. It's intelligence based, right? So might as well. Hey, 14. <laughs> 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 Big brain stuff. <laughs> um, yeah, so you're kind of looking through, um, and you, you do notice that maybe this is. Uh, like maybe it almost looks like it's for like a healer or uh, maybe some type of like shaman or uh, that it, it it's all like natural like remedies and and you kind of get the impression uh, that they put a, a significance in that in in the ability to kind of use natural ingredients to to heal well considering the state of the galaxy <laughs> uh orgus is going to take this as an opportunity to get his leg up on this kind of research he's been trying to figure out is there anything on this planet that's good for healing considering his profession so yeah take not take note take stock gimme 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 yeah um actually go ahead and give me a medicine i'll give it to you okay medicine Yeah, so you're kind of going through, and you do notice uh, that, you know, most of it's gone, but you do notice kind of one bag, uh, like a small pouch, and, and inside, you can kind of give it a smell, um, and it looks like almost some type of leaf that maybe they put in, um, like, a tea uh, or, or something like that, that you, like, kind of boil. Either you grind it first and, and then boil it, or maybe boil the leaf's whole. Um, and it and it looks presented in a way that it's some type of like healing or um, some type of remedy. Okay, I guess we'll study it further later on. Yeah. Okay. I'll add that to my inventory. All right. All right. And I'll just. Forge is going to cross the bridge and just stay on the other stay on the side as a watch until we're ready to move on to the next room. And the only thing Topic's going to do uh, for right now is uh, so to grab R1 uh, and then try to quickly scan one of the centipedes. Uh, and... <laughs> he, he, he would enjoy that. <laughs> yeah. Um, actually, you can go ahead and give me a medicine check if you want. Can I, can I do survival for that one to see if I can scan it? Uh, yeah, go ahead and give me survival. That's fine, too. Uh, can Reclaimer give him the health action? Yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> nice. Nice. <laughs> so as you uh, kind of go through and skin it, you notice that the hide is surprisingly very thick. Uh, they don't necessarily look at They almost look kind of slimy. But as you're starting to cut through, you notice that they're surprisingly tough. Um, and kind of use some expert skill. Uh, because inside the worm, you notice like um, almost like a sack or pouch that's filled with um, acid. And you're able to kind of expertly uh, go around that so you don't uh, nick it. Yeah, and you can get yourself a hide. After he kind of goes through and you see a build, like kind of, uh, especially with uh, R1 giving him some advice, some expert precision, uh, leaving that acid sack in place, uh, he kind of pulls it out and goes, Thank you, R1. This is, this is your trophy today. He'll do it again. Just uh, yeah. <laughs> hopefully, not, hopefully not with the acid sack in the middle. Good grief. <laughs> <laughs> we just left the acid sack. The topic was like, oh, there's acid in there, but that will burn, but the hide is good. <laughs> uh, he doesn't much care. He'll be careful of the acid sack, but he immediately just like puts it over his shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> just off in the distance. Action. <laughs> I wonder if that would. Go ahead. Oh no, I was just wondering aloud if that sack could work like a acid grenade. You could certainly take it and try to find out. 
Dravik will pull it like out a science and check. Hand it to Gus. <laughs> you could hold that. Like, you could hold that one. <laughs> I don't. I don't know why I'm imagining like a, like like throwing a water balloon and having it like splash like here. A little vial of acid. <laughs> Take that! Um, oh God. So far, yeah. so far is like TikTok people. TikTok, let's go. Ah uh, yes, let us go and continue our job. We've only gotten one. Revelation, okay. help me with these bodies. We are taking all of them. Um, the speeder's not going to fit them all. We're going to be not lucky to take all one, in I one think. piece. Um, wink, Tom shakes his wink. <laughs> so, I'm not a big guy uh, dismembering things unless they're fighting me. And we only need to take one body as proof to the villagers. And if we could leave it intact, I'm quite sure... The science folk, like our doc here, would prefer it to be in one piece. Right, doc? Back me up, doc. Right, doc? Yes. I mean, your... I, I mean I'm, he's going to give the, the hide a bit of a knock, you know, and say, somebody could repurpose this. I mean, we're... Oh, no, know, we're, we're talking about the these guys' diet. bodies. I'm talking oh, about the human. Yeah. Oh, no, what is wrong with you? <laughs> good response. That's exactly what I was hoping I, for. Do you not preserve the organs of your specimens in different jars and vials? I, I, not these. Again, this was more just to understand. And also, I, I know you don't necessarily have the uh, proper equipment to understand this, but <laughs> they stink. <laughs> This Probably is not a problem fine. for me or my museum. I have several air fresheners in there. <laughs> so I'm like, we got another mission. We don't want to bring another dead body to attract things. I'm saying leave it. Well, you you know what Perhaps we can come back later. Yeah, After yeah. all, it would be wrong of us to not use the resources available to survive. After all, if I met my papa, would be very upset if I did not point out the name of the AP. Stranded. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering where you're going with that. <laughs> I'm still wondering. I'm like, oh. I'm like I, I, I suppose we are stranded. Yes. I, I but... can't afford to be not using everything at our disposal. And the, uh, unfortunately, they are dead. So let's if just they say have that... souls, I'm sure they've passed on already. Their midi chlorians have moved. It's fine. I don't know anything about any chlorine stuff, but I think we need to just move on because it's possible this area is not safe. These worms got in these folks somehow, and I don't want to stick around to get one. I, I don't think this is a spontaneous growth. It's part of their evolutionary cycle. I don't think this is how they reproduce. We should leave while this while we still have the sun on our side. Agreed. Let's go. Yeah. And scouting ahead. <laughs> All right. <laughs> like the, the uh, one so... the one person without dark vision is taking the lead. <laughs> well, I don't have dark vision either, and I'm used to using the torches that we're finding. So I don't want to oh. blow my uh, glow rod yet. So you know that's fair. Um, yeah, so it's kind of uh, late afternoon. Uh, you would have time to to try to make it to the a second relay if you still wanted to to do that, though. Time to roll that oh, 100%. to see the speed. Yeah. Yeah, so One is we're slow, take. two is normal, three is fast and risky. Well, hold on a minute. Four. Before you roll, before you roll, oh. why don't oh, we sorry. pretend that everything on your die for that you're rolling is a one? Oh no, we gotta give some risk <laughs> to it. Yes, we gotta sure. give some. <laughs> Keep in mind, we will move at scout-like speeds. Yes, and we, we do want to do true. scout. Because we're All right. scouting. Uh, so right, go I'm ahead done. and give me a piloting check. So you're driving, you're trying to make up a little bit of uh, lost time? Hey, no, he thinks he's going slow. He thinks he's going slow. Okay. <laughs> but it's like, whoo, like we're gone. We're going. Uh all right, yeah. Nice. nice. I believe yeah. your communication relay may need some modification. Although I enjoy the speed, this is not slow. It is simply your organic brain taking in information far too quickly. I understand our current trajectory. We are going currently 
two miles per hour. <laughs> Forgetting to include like two zeros. <laughs> Yeah, so you're just like hauling, but you just look like you're just like casually strolling through, expertly weaving uh, through the terrain as kind of the uh, the sun sun is kind of starting to set. Um, but you definitely got enough light, uh, so go ahead and give me two uh, d tens for the reliability check, nice. and you get to drop one, so that's a nine. So you're good. Uh, yeah, so you kind of make it to the other site. Um, this one is, is you can actually approach it kind of from kind of the side and uh, actually take the speeder all the way up to the, the hill that you need to go. Uh, so you can go all the way up to the site if you want to. Yep. Uh, he's basically stopped the speeder like right as it were to like go off the cliff. So it just stops the front that's facing directly off. Uh, but he gets off and goes to immediately start putting the stuff together. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Just from uh from from sixty to zero right at the end. In six seconds, nice. Uh, you do know what slow means, right? It's the Englandic basic, it's a speed that is not fast or faster is slow. I mean anyway. perhaps we should give him measurable Meth uh, give him a measurable concept of speed as opposed to vagues or vagaries like fast, slow, reckless. Oh my god, we're all going to die. I mean, to be fair, to be fair to Reclaimer, um, it is all relative. Slow compared so, to what, but I digress. So, uh, hey, Doc, wondering if should we all get checked because I really don't want a worm popping out of my chest anytime soon. I mean, is there like some kind of scan you could do? Just making sure, because you know. I mean, did any were any of you bit by them by those monsters we fought in the cave? Um, I don't think so, but uh, who's to say they were? Those guys were hit by the monsters. I mean, I did see some mild lacerations on some on the one that I took a very close look at. If you want, I could uh, to take a look at the party while uh, our resident scanner deployer, reclaimer. Um, do we trust him to do this by himself? Oh, I misspelled it. <laughs> I wasn't even trying to grieve you. Grieve. I was uh, like, roll with it. This looks, yeah. uh, so um, reclaimer is actually going to look. Uh, yeah, he's going to look at. Um, at the good doctor here and uh, say, going over through my memory banks and what I saw in the battle, there was one who had who had gotten attacked by the worms. And oh. you look over to Tobak. And he's just looking around the Anchalala. He's like, I'm fine. <laughs> well, I'm sure that the... Uh, the uh, I did get some acid on me. Well, I, I can give you. I can give take a, a look at both of you and see. But I imagine the former residents of the cave felt absolutely fine until they didn't. Let me take a look at you. If you must, I'm not going to add anything to you. Calm down. And uh, I mean, I am going to look them over. Why not? Let's see if there's anything worth mentioning. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Did you guys kind of patch up before you guys uh, left? I was going to no. ask if we had time for a short rest on the, uh, at least for those of us who weren't driving on the the drive. Yeah, yeah. So if you wanted to take, yeah, it would be fine. You could take short rest on the drive. It was uh, quite quick, so it was maybe a, a little over an hour instead of the two hours expected, uh, but still plenty of time. Uh, so if you wanted to use a hit die or do any healing, you're more than welcome. Um, and yeah, so the as you're looking them over, uh, go ahead and give me give me a medicine check or investigation okay. your choice. Um, definitely going to roll with medicine. I am going to use general practice to, um, there you go, expand, revitalize. Oh, wait, if at the end of it, yeah. So the second paragraph in the middle, if you are any, uh, allies within 30 feet of me. So yeah, we're getting hit at the end of a short rest by spending one more hit die. Each of them regains an extra one D six hit points. Oh, sweet. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. So feel free. That's what's the Okay, um, and I will get medicine check. Uh, 
I so it, I assume that's a ten. Yes. Yeah, you, you kind of look him over, and the the bite it, it looks like it's healing okay. Uh, you're able to kind of bandage it up. You don't notice anything. Um, he's he seems to be in pretty good shape. Okay, well, I think you're fine, but I'm, I hope that you'll share with me if that begins to change. I guess I will. As long as you don't add any more metal parts. I mean, okay, well, you know, and just don't lose any more organic ones. <laughs> well, good luck on not getting a chest popper, man. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> that would be jacked up. Um, okay, so let's go deal with this next uh, nav point. Who's with me? Everyone. All right, I'm, I'm hoping we can get back and have a decent night's sleep back at the Genesis. Yeah, so it's it's definitely through. kind of approaching uh, dusk, but you're more than welcome to set up the, the relay if you want to pop that down and, and get that going. Yeah. Uh, real fast before before he does it, he's going to roll up to uh, to the back, pull out a sucker, hand it to him, go back to <laughs> go back to sign it up. That's so cool. <laughs> He'll take the sucker just like. Bemused, face, like look on his scaly face. He looks over to Gus, like, "Are, are you seeing this?" And I he goes, "A sucker, a sucker." <laughs> now, the most important question: Does Tavok enjoy the sucker, or does he? Yes. Is it? Are you allergic to um, it? Like anaphylactic shock or anything? Just making sure you're not. Allergic he's to like, it. he's not one to waste food, so he he gives it a weird <laughs> look. Uh, but he start like. Uh, with big lizard teeth, he just starts chopping at the sucker. Just... It How many looks did it take? <laughs> One. <laughs> Why is this the most surprising thing I've seen? Uh, I, I'm uh, a fan of sushi, but that just seems reckless. <laughs> so I guess we'll set it up um, and and point to the instructions again. Everybody else, help me. Instructions no, no, right no, I have told you I am very intelligent. <laughs> like something clearly pops and like the top of his head wiggles a bit. Intelligent. Give me an, uh, an, an intelligence. <laughs> Nothing can go wrong. Nothing can go wrong. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, you spend the time, you kind of set it up and uh, deploy it, you punch through. Um, and unfortunately, you punch in the same commands as you did before, uh, get to the end, and then it just pops up like a big error, and it just starts beeping at you. And it says, resetting coordinates, uh, please start over. Uh, and then you have to go through this process again. And unfortunately, we have to start at the beginning. Um, but there are instructions. Uh, you are welcome to use the instructions. <laughs> Even at the bottom, it says, I, when ID10T happens, do this. <laughs> Re Reclaimer is looking at this just like, I am over 200 years old. I do not require instructions. Uh, Revelations, like, is pulling his hand out, just like, just, just like, I, I, I can I can get it. Uh, well, gonna Does anybody else have mechanics out of curiosity? Because I know I don't. I mean, I he's proficient with technology. Uh, <laughs> the doctor is. <laughs> could, the, could the doctor um, read the instructions? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So okay. So you punch through this time, and uh, your memory does work. Uh, start smoking a little bit, but you go. Uh, but unfortunately, the, the process takes a significant amount of time. It's, it's slow hardware. Um, and as the robot is working, you kind of see the sunset. Um, and it is now uh, clearly going to be dark before you can get home. So if the group would like to do anything, uh, or, or of course, you can drive the speeder home uh, in, in the dark. And I'm good. FYI, I'm good all you had to do is use the instructions, and that wasn't a roll. <laughs> um, but... <laughs> All this. right, so what does the group want to do? He's too prideful. He's too prideful. I planned for overnight, man. If you guys are good, we could stay. I prefer to stay. Uh, I don't think it's not head finished. Head. We must go. Do not worry. I can drive us at safe speed. 
So I reach over and grab the keys. <laughs> <laughs> that's his revelation, man. He, he's got blades for figures. That, that's going to be difficult. So a contested strength roll. Yes. <laughs> I'm like, we can stay overnight because we because you because uh, from my understanding is yes you did it but it, it takes time for it to initiate correct so we want to wait until it's in, fully initiated is that my understanding? Yes, yeah, so you'd have to you'd want you don't necessarily have to wait but to make sure that it's all set you'd have to wait. So war uh, force is like we're staying mission ain't done until it's complete and, <laughs> which means we stay overnight and I brought an emergency shelter with us so we can chill. For the night. At least we got two oh, emergency shelters. Oh, goody. Yeah. Nice. Well, I don't have two. I only have one. But if oh, it's. Uh, Topic has his own, too. <laughs> Sweet. Topic oh, will nice. have his own that he sleeps <laughs> in by himself. <laughs> well, because, like, a normal two man tent don't fit me. So that's why I needed a shelter. <laughs> Plus, I considered Star Wars clamping a little bit. So, um, okay. Um, so uh, we can set that up and set up watches. Prepare for the tuck in. Rick, Revelation no. will read you a story from the old times. Well, I will up your pillow and give you many, many good vibes, as the organics say. So, um, so I'll take first watch. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So you Best will of have you go to ahead do... and go to sleep. I'll, I'll take second. <laughs> Um, well, um, before we before we do that, though, uh, so you will have to do when you stay overnight in the wilderness. This is kind of the, the second rule is uh, you will have to do some type of con con check. Uh, so before we do that, the base con check is always going to be uh, 15, but uh, you can reduce that down uh, to a base 10 uh, by eating some type of food. So the food everyone would naturally have on them would be rations. I'm just assuming that you've got rations. You always yes. have them. Um, but they are reliable or unreliable one if un, if uncooked. Uh, so I guess kind of what does the, the group want to do? Do you want to kind of just do a sit down and have the food? I'll tell you, uh, Tavik would definitely try to go hunt his own food. It'd be good. Okay. Well, you said yeah, you got to cook your that. rations, right? Yep, you're welcome to try to cook them if you have uh, like skill in that area, or like a kit or something like that. I think somebody has oh, a kit, but Tommy, yeah, Tommy's I actually do have the kit. I'm I'm that guy with the chef's kit. <laughs> Sweet. So we got our guy. Most of us got rations, so let's have him cook it. Uh, if you want to go hunting, yeah. more power to you. Yeah, um, Tommy's but, definitely uh, gonna go hunt. <laughs> uh, Revelation right. will go with uh, Tommy to give him uh, help action, help him hunt. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm conflicted because I kind of want to go too, just because I get double when I forage. Nice. Yeah. So uh, this, so if you were to go hunt, uh, you would have to kind of do that while the your robot's doing the programming. So the uh, so reclaimer, you'd have to still be doing the programming there. Uh, but everyone else, if you kind of wanted during that time, you could try to go either forage or. Or find some type of uh, natural food, and just you just give me a survival check on that one. Tomic will turn it. Go ahead, sorry. Let's make this a competition. See who can bring back the biggest game. I win. Oh. <laughs> 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 this is Let's see how it does. You can. Oh, <laughs> Tom, I win. Oh my god. <laughs> Apparently, all Tavik found was humble pie. <laughs> all right. So, so Tavik, as you're kind of stumbling around, uh, you think you hear something on the other side of the bush. You jump through the bush, uh, trip, land in a pond. You see uh, one of those big ox jump out and spring, and then uh, Casper snipes it. <laughs> I'm sorry. We're, we're, did you call dibs? Topic is like, I didn't. I didn't hear that. So I. Like, I just. Water falling from him. Just kind of comes up and shudders. He goes, yeah, yeah, dibs. Yeah, yeah, dibs." And you see, he just kind of hangs his head low. His tail's like still. And he just goes, "Good shot." You, you can get the next one, jolly good. <laughs> <laughs> um, Sweet. 
so yeah so and i'll start be, cooking it up for everybody yeah nice so that would be enough for everyone kind of for the the night you get some fresh food uh so yeah everyone go ahead and give me a con 10 check um also what about the uh, droids uh metal metal the, no. I, droids don't eat right no they don't eat they technically don't sleep they just kind of power down for a bit uh they don't drink they don't breathe Mm-hmm. You don't drink, don't smoke. What do you do? Just say, just okay. Okay. Um, the song. I'm aging myself. Damn. <laughs> oh <laughs> so, man, you're so distracted for food. So if you fail the check, you do one, one level of exhaustion, and the the robots would have to roll, but they wouldn't. Obviously, they wouldn't have to eat. So we'll just say yours is going to be a baseline ten. Um. I'm really hoping that gorilla's exploit will apply here. Oh, he he had too much fun in the hunting. He, he he tuckered himself out. Yeah, you guys out all night partying, looking for the the oxen. <laughs> all right, so you will get one level of exhaustion, and you will get a long rest, but you will not be able to remove that level of exhaustion from the long rest. So, all right, but. Other than that, you guys are going to take shifts through the night. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, how how do I apply exhaustion to my character sheet, or is that just something I needed to look up? If you click on the gears uh, and you go, where is it at? Uh, oh, on the right hand side, uh, there's a like show exhaustion button. Click on it from off, off to on, and it'll let you add it in. Okay. Nice. Yeah, and it gets. So I'd have to look it up exactly, but it gets progressively worse. If you get too many, you just straight die. Uh, but I think one is you're slowed to... I think, uh, one, you have disadvantage on us uh, checks, say skill checks. Okay. Yeah. Uh, ability checks. Mm-hmm. Wait, and he's the driver? I can take no, one. No, uh, no, I'm the one who failed. Reclaimer is fine. The driver's fine. Okay. Wait. All right. Revelation roll by it looks like it's full of fun. Wait. So I think Casper is just the only one that uh after all the, the hunting and cooking, if I just get a little too tired. I can't carry the team without taking a toll. <laughs> Who's taking first watch? Uh Casper. Okay. Unless you want to not take it now that you're exhausted, I'll take the first one. I mean I I, I don't really sleep very much, so I don't mind. Because, hey, only need three hours. Okay, well then, give three-hour guy, our doc, the first watch. <laughs> I'll take second. Um, uh, okay. I, I'll, I guess I'll just sleep then. <laughs> yeah, and, and so you guys kind of notice out, the worms have been the only thing on this planet that's ever attacked anyone. So the night actually goes, um, you know, without any incident. Uh, you don't see any more of the worms. They're... You definitely kind of hear some some creatures out and about. There are some some uh, nocturnal creatures, maybe an owl or some type of large bird uh, that you kind of see in the distance or here. But it goes on, uh, you know, it goes well for the the party. Um, so the, the satellite array is is fully online. Uh, you kind of hear it turn and click into position. You see that green light flashing that it's uh, set, um, and you get through the night. And now it's the uh, morning, and we'll probably wrap up a little bit here, but we can, I assume we'll, you guys are headed back, so we can probably do that, but, and then we'll end. Uh, nice. So it gets through the morning, you do have that one level of exhaustion if you failed. Um, but yeah, so what are you guys, uh, what are you guys doing? Straight to the next, uh, next objective, getting that last one set up. Oh, we got the, uh, we the did last too. We just yeah. have to head yeah, back to the town now. Yeah, yeah oh. head back to town, that's our next objective. Oh, I thought we had three to do. Cool. Yeah, we've only done two so far. Was it only two locations, or was it so... just the two? I thought it was just two, yeah. yeah. Oh. Because the oh. third one might need to be set up back at the ship, which I'm assuming the main engineer is doing that. Um, but we could look at their instructions and just to make sure. So let's do that. <laughs> um, and I'll have the technology guy over here, that a doc that actually is willing to read, um, to ensure that uh, we did everything. Oh, fine. Give it here. <laughs> Thanks, man. You're a trooper. 
I mean, I'll read it. Uh, is there anything that uh, it, it, apparently I'm the first person, the first person to actually read it, right? So yeah, you can like clearly see this was laid out for like uh, like a ten year old. Like <laughs> you could easily follow this and have done it, no problems. And it's got like big like pictures, like uh, so it, it was done by Zazi, mm -hmm. and you can tell he thinks everyone is just like a complete idiot. <laughs> um, and so he, he like laid it out that way with like big picture drawings, annotating the buttons and what you're supposed to do. And you would be able to tell the, the third array is the Genesis itself. I'm, I'm almost offended to read this. Yes. You understand right. why I refuse then. <laughs> I can't believe I'm saying this, but on some level, yes, I do. Good God. And he'll ball up the paper. Like, Wait, but are we good? Are we good? Yes, yes, yes. We're perfectly okay, fine. Good. Uh, oh, by the way, we're... don't let her, man. Don't let her. And he looks at you like this, with this weird, like, don't let her, man. Give me it. No, give it to me. I will make use of this paper. <laughs> we don't let her, man. We leave the cam slate I... better than what we came here for. Let's go. I Absolutely. will recycle. As, like, his top opens up like an actual trash can. So, uh, at least. Uh, you know what? He's just like, you know what? I He's going to, like like, straighten it out. Fold it back up and say a memento and put it in a pocket. <laughs> Good job. Close this back though. Good job. Only you. Be it. Good job. <laughs> okay. I won't let her. Okay. Won't let her, won't recycle. <laughs> <laughs> So let's go home carefully, guys. Uh, uh, oh, let me roll for the speed. Hold on, hold on. So on the speeder, I'm gonna make sure. Is there like a speedometer that tells you the speed, like <laughs> how fast you go? Because otherwise, we're gonna take like a marker that says slow here. <laughs> this is where he wants to go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hold on. Okay. Closing literacy.exe. There we go. <laughs> well, the, the speed I want to move at is 12 parsecs per Kessel run. <laughs> that's the direction. That's how fast I want to go. Oh, no! <laughs> that's how fast you go, apparently. Ludicrous speed. No, listen, so fast was a bit reckless. This is ludicrous speed. Is there any like, indication? Hold on. Is there any indication from Reclaimer that he's like, yeah. I'm 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 driving to die, like anything like that. So, what happens is he probably starts to catch on fire. <laughs> <laughs> I shall take it slow. It's like a Robinson flame <laughs> revelation, like already getting out the flame fire extinguisher before it just boom. Max speed, even faster. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Orgus is uh, proficient in piloting. <laughs> so what he is going to do his absolute best to direct this psychopathy that is behind the wheel of our vehicle. <laughs> and the force is using all four hands to keep the veins in his head from popping He's so bad. <laughs> He's like, he can't so, uh, real fast, real fast. The good doctor here is giving an advantage, right? Yes. We're going yep. to need it. I hope you guys do. Oof. Oh, mm. So you know how this Vita was facing directly off to the cliff? <laughs> All right. No, so no, not actually, it's been, but it's been whatever. It's a long rest, right? Is, is, I forget. Is Arcadian Brilliance a selfish trait? Whenever you make. Okay, so it's not like Defiant. Never mind. And I don't have anyone no, This is just going. What? Oh. Go in the fastest speed possible. So tell me, how bad is this? Is, was it a buffalo yeah. dropped into a tree, the ground? No, I, there isn't really anything to crash into. Uh, but you can tell you're just hauling in the speeder and you floor it. Uh, and when you do, you hear this 220 year old speeder just start to really sputter. Uh, and go ahead and roll me uh, two d10s, and this is not where you subtract one. All right. No ones. 
Okay, you're you're good. I you hear some like... incredibly intelligent. I can keep this going as he's actively like in an inferno. Like Revelation's trying to put it out, but the foam just keeps going back because of the speed. <laughs> Yeah, so you guys are just hauling. You're probably going, like, you were traveling, like, 50 mile an hour. That was, like, a comfortable speed. You're going, like, 130. You're, like, maxing this thing out, flying over the plains. The engine starts to catch on fire. You're putting it out with a fire extinguisher. Um, but you make it back. Uh, you make it back. Uh, the speeder is still sputtering, uh, and you get there, and it just, and it just kind of stops. Um, uh, and the speeder there, now has he... reliable two. <laughs> okay. so, as we get there, could he do a donut before parallel parking it? <laughs> sure. Sure. Uh, you, you whip around and like do this donut in the lot and everyone hears you coming uh, because the speeder um, is making noise at this point. And you see Zazie out there, who's um, I, I didn't I probably didn't say he's an Anselin, uh, you know the tiny little fibby guys, and you see him just just screaming and like stomping, <laughs> just like uh, you can tell he is upset that uh, what we're, we're all doing that in the speeder. Out. We're all screaming. <laughs> <laughs> you're just no, doing donut. Screaming like even Revelation is just like I have done it. I. It has yet to explode. <laughs> as soon as the fair those box, we should you, get off. Like it may explode now. You realize, <laughs> that, you realize that along with the engine, you've also burned up any goodwill we might have had with the good engineer over here. Do not worry. Uh, I will provide him assistance in all and any repairs. Oh, boy. I, uh, <laughs> I don't think that's going to mend. I don't think that's going to patch this up. As well as you might think. I am a great assistant. I think it shall. I guess we'll find All out. Right. What did you... what did Caspar pick up when he was foraging? Was it like berries or meat or a healthy bison. fear of death? Yeah, the bison. <laughs> yeah, it was like a, okay. A, it looks like a bison or an ox, but it was a big animal. He's he's trying to cook it over uh, over the engine. <laughs> Bison, just like throw it on the engine. Uh, you see all he's like, got uh, it on like, a stick. He's just holding it over. You can't so, waste like, heat, right? Rotate it slowly. So, so you can't since, cook it evenly. So Don't since, want to repeat last night's mistake. Since the uh, doc uh, proved that he could pilot, I'm pointing to is it Revelation or is it uh, which Reclaimer. one is piloting? Which one of the robots? Reclaimer is like, dude, you have been demoted to backseat pilot. No more. <laughs> This you, is unacceptable. <laughs> you see it, I just, am uh, a droid. I was made for this. <laughs> you were made for this 200 years ago. Good grief. You see the, the entire... I, he like that pulls means out I have pocket. more experience. He pulls out his pocket what looks like a restraining bolt and he just starts waving it at you. <laughs> you, it? you it? And you can see he's I was just like, so mad with the bison <laughs> being cooked on his speeder. Like, he, put his, he poured his love into it, heart and soul and he just storms off. <laughs> Wait, I can hold him. I can hold him for you. I uh, like An engine creates a flavor thing. you've never tasted, I promise. <laughs> Whenever the guy was so so straining bald, uh claim is like, do not recite the ancient spells to me, Engineer. I was there when they were you. <laughs> with that <laughs> right, well. oh, so with that I think that's probably where we'll wrap up for the night. <laughs> <laughs> I feel so good about this group of psychos. What is this? Yes. To guess you can't have win without losses, right? <laughs> <laughs> no one got hurt. Yeah, that's true. Right. Sweet. Uh, yeah, well, uh, that, that was oh, fun. Keith, oh, before I keep anything to add before we wrap up? Uh, no, just uh. 
I think that was a lot of fun. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed that. And um, I thought those mechanics worked pretty well, but if anyone has any kind of tips or, or suggestions to kind of further refine those, uh, let me know. I'm, I'm more than happy to kind of work uh, to get the wilderness or reliability um, to feel a little better if, if it's clunky. So I'll just kind of leave that out there if anyone has any f feedback. But I had a lot of fun. I hope you guys did too. And uh, I guess I'll see you in two weeks. Yeah, I had a so, blast, man. Sounds good. But... All right. Yeah. We'll see you guys tune awesome. in for next or two weeks oh. from now for Stranded uh, episode two. Uh, come back next Tuesday for Hunt, not Hunted, uh, Invasion. Wow. Invasion <laughs> episode 11. Hunted was the last campaign. Uh, invasion episode <laughs> 11. Uh, and then come in tomorrow, too, for our Lancer one shot for the game of the month. Uh, tomorrow at 7 p.m. And hopefully you'll be one of the lucky winners. Uh, but we'll see you guys next time. Thank you. Bye.